It's Halloween on this Thursday night for college football, and it should be a wild atmosphere for the 20th ranked App State Mountaineers, one of nine remaining undefeated teams as they try to go to 8-0 tonight as they take on the Georgia Southern Eagles from Kid Brewer Stadium. Happy Halloween, everyone, as we welcome you to The Rock here in Boone, North Carolina. Great to have you with us, Mike Corey and Rini Ingolia. I, I know you wanted to dress up here tonight. You know, what, what happened here? Well, if you ask Twitter, we are dressed up, right, as announcers. So here we go. <laughs> There'll be plenty of outstanding shots to show you from the crowd here tonight at App State. They're fired up as they should be because App State has a chance to be in this New Year's Six Bowl game. How do they get there? Well, a lot of contenders in a group of five. Remember, the highest-ranked conference champion gets to represent the group of five in a New Year's Six Bowl game. App State is right there. They've won 13 straight. You know, Coach Eli Drinkwitz talks about winning one at a time. If they can do that and win out, they have a legitimate chance to be that group of five team representing in the New Year's Six Bowl game. Former offensive coordinator last year at NC State, now leading the Mountaineers. How about what happened last year, though, when they took on this Georgia Southern team, right? Well, when these two teams play, throw out the records. This is a huge rivalry. Dates back to when they were in 1AA. It wasn't even FCS back then in the Southern Conference. They brought this rivalry with them to the Sun Belt. And I talked about App State winning 13 in a row. Oh, by the way, that was their last loss right there against Georgia Southern. How about Chad Lunsford? This team lost 10 games two years ago. They won 10 games last year. They won the bowl game, the Camellia Bowl. You and I did it. But in this matchup, 35th meeting of all time here. App State's kind of had their number here, especially here at home. It's a tough place to play. Nationally, this is the best rivalry you've never heard of. These teams love to go at it. Chad Lunsford's done an excellent job at Georgia Southern. Uh, they're fighting through it a little bit this year, but this is going to be a heck of a game tonight. App State has won six of the last eight, including five straight home wins here over Georgia Southern. And it's been a windy and rainy day all day here today in Boone, North Carolina. Well, and expect if this wind swirls, it, it'll cause some issues. That was Eli Drinkwitz's biggest issue when I talked to him yesterday. He was worried about the wind, and you see the ball gets blown off the tee already. And so it's been swirling tonight. What about our temperatures here tonight? Now, you, you talk about the wind. It's going to be swirling. It's 43 degrees, 23-mile-an-hour wind, and we were told that the rain might stop in another hour or so. Football it's a late drizzle right now. Football weather. I love it. You love it is right. Here we go. Opening kickoff, App State, and they'll begin from the 25-yard line. As you said, 7-0. and oh, Big win over North Carolina earlier this year. Now taking on the Eagles here tonight, trying to go to 8-0 and oh on the season and be remaining undefeated as Zach Thomas, the junior quarterback, has been outstanding for App State. 17-2 and two as the starting quarterback for these guys. I mean, the kid's a stud. I mean, you say 17-2, and two, really, that Georgia Southern game, he only played a couple snaps. He gets credited for the starting quarterback with a loss. A great leader, manages the game, a tough kid, and a, just a very great leader of that offense. Darrington Evans gets the first call tonight, and for App State, has a 14-yard run and a first down. Donald Rutledge Jr. and Kendrick Duncan on the tackle for Georgia Southern. And, and watching Darrington Evans on film, he's in every down back that I love. 5'11", 200 pounds. He can run it as evidence there. Catches it out of backfield and he can block as well. Evans again. How about the pace of this game here tonight? Well, I asked Eli Drinkwitz, who's also the offensive coordinator, about the pace, and he said he doesn't worry about the pace. He tries to get the right play call to the right player. You know, give the ball to his best players in space. Let them make people miss. You mentioned as you look at Evans' numbers, what he's done this season. He's been pretty spectacular and high-ranked in the Sun Belt. Second down and long here for App State. They're going to spread him out with five wide. Pass is dropped by Corey Sutton. You mentioned Zach Thomas a moment ago, Rainey. He got hurt on the third play of the game last year against Georgia Southern, as you were talking about those two losses, and then the other one to Penn State. Of course, no slats there. But... You know, what have you liked from watching him on film? I, I just like his understanding of the offense and his leadership. Now, remember, Scott Satterfield was his coach last year. Moved on to Louisville, insert Eli Drinkwitz, and it's they haven't missed a beat. I mean, if you're an App State fan, you, you have to be thrilled of this transition with a new head coach and, and some new coordinators. Third down and nine, opening series of the game for App State. The pass is dropped again, and this time he was looking for Thomas Hennigan. 
And they're going to have to punt here. Fourth and nine from their own 40-yard line. So after one first down, it stalls rather quickly. And it's two drops, right? Two good passes by Zach Thomas. Hennigan has really been their leading receiver, and that's a case where he just starts to run with the ball before he secures it. Xavier Sabach is the punter, and Wesley Kennedy is back to return. He does have a punt return for a touchdown this season. Sabach gets it off cleanly. And Kennedy's going to let this one go. Good App State bounce inside the 15-yard line where it's down. And the Eagles will have the ball on offense when we come back. Stay tuned. Well, we had some pumpkin carving going on yesterday. There you are, Reedy. Look at me getting in there, scooping that pumpkin out. Put me to work. Did you, uh, did you make us an ESPN uh, pumpkin? I mean, Colleen, Melinda Mazo, our A2, was carving as well. Did a great job. They look awesome. It's fun to be with you here tonight on this Thursday night on Halloween from App State. It's a blackout. Everyone wearing black here in the stands. The students were here an hour before the game started as Georgia Southern is on offense for the first time tonight. And it's Wesley Kennedy. The third, who gets two yards on a first down run. What about the Eagles here? Four and three on the season, coming in three wins in a row for them. Well, and it's an offense that if, if you know anything about Georgia Southern, and if you like running the football, you're going to love this offense. About 82% of the time, they run the ball. They're a triple option team out of the spread. Shy Wirtz is the quarterback. The junior out of Clinton, South Carolina, 67 yards away from 2,000 rushing yards. But he's going to be lined up on the outside, and it's going to be a direct snap here to Wesley Kennedy, and he's going to run it up the middle, gets across the 20, and it's going to be about three yards shy of a first down pick up a six. Yeah, a little different look there. You put Kennedy in, give him that direct snap, give you a little more of a, of a, of a power run mm -hmm. up the middle. Going to stay with Kennedy, it looks like. Now, now they'll move him over, and Wirtz will take the snap. Third down, Georgia Southern opening drive for them tonight. And a gift to J.D. King. He is going to be close. Let's see where they spot it. And don't forget App State, as we just saw that graphic. They're one of the best teams in the nation on three and out and third down stops. Just an inside handoff. Good job by the backers to fill there. At 48, Demetrius Taylor has had an excellent year this year, but got enough for the first down. And how about this season? 47% of the time, Appalachian State is forced a three and a half. Third best of the nation. So that's huge for Georgia Southern, right? Get that first down, keep this drive alive, especially on a third down conversion. Kennedy and King. Flanking words at a fresh set of downs. Option, got to count it. There he goes, cross the 30. First down, shoved out of bounds. And it was Akeem Davis Gaither that pushed him out, but it's a gain of 21 that time for Kennedy. So what, what makes Georgia Southern so new, unique under Bob DeBess offensive coordinator, they run triple option, but they do it out of a spread look. That causes problems for defenses. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, told me, they like to go 10 personnel, which is one back, four wide receivers, and then they'll motion them in and run option. And for a defense, you have to be so very disciplined against a set like that. First down from the 43-yard line, Chad Lunsford. He's done a really nice job here. He was here earlier as an assistant back in the early 2000s. Came back again for a second stint, was promoted to the interim head coach, and took over his first full season last year. And it was one of the best turnarounds ever. To go from 10 losses to 10 wins. King, trying to push the pile, gets about three. Talking to members of their staff earlier, really, their expectations are now so high, right, from their fan base yeah, after winning it. a bowl hey, game last year. And blame it on social media and Twitter, but you're right, a 10-win season, bowl win, and now it's like, ah, right, we're 4-3, what's going on? And you know, those are the, it's a good thing for a coach, though, right, to have high expectations from your fan base. It's annoying, but it's good. Yeah. Matt LaRoche is now in in the backfield with J.D. King. 
Wearing number five for App State or for Georgia Southern. Play fake, pressure comes in, Woods gets away. And takes off. Bounds in midfield. About three yards shy of a first down. And that's what Shy Words can do for you. Drop back to pass. He can make a guy miss and then at least pick up some yardage. And so third and short, and that is the distance that defense coordinator Ted Roof said, we have to keep them out of third and short. That's where they want to be. And they are there once again. Six plays, six runs so far for Georgia Southern at midfield with a third and three. Blackstock, he got in there, and the sophomore makes a huge play for App State defensively. Yeah, and the coaches are really high on George Blackstock. They told me he had a great week of practice. He plays inside, but he can also play defensive end. He plays inside there. Excellent job shedding the block of Lawrence Edwards and getting to the ball care. Excellent job by Blackstock. Yeah, you said it. We talked about that earlier. Said that you know you might see him on an outside rush uh, as well. But he's had a special season now with his 23rd tackle, and that one for just a one yard gain and Georgia Southern has to punt as Anthony Beck will punt. And a good punt by the Eagles here. This is gonna roll all the way down and out of bounds at the five yard line. So App State will take over. Second offensive series when we return, no score. ESPN Thursday Night College Football, brought to you by Skittles, Taste the Rainbow, and Twix. It's time to decide. This is the Magic Giant concert that was here tonight at App State. Had to get moved inside due to the rain. Sponsored by Mars Candy on campus earlier here tonight. That was awesome. Yeah, they did a great job. They got all this candy here for everyone tonight, too. I heard something like 10,000 pounds. That's, of that's a candy. lot of candy. It's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, thanks to them and their sponsorship here tonight of this game. And on Halloween from App State, great to see Magic Giant in the concert. And they were awesome. And so are the fans here tonight, too, really showing up at Kid Brewer Stadium, and they support the Mountaineers. It's been so tough to beat here over the years. Back on offense from the five-yard line. And not much happening here for Evans on this carry. Kendrick Duncan Jr. pushes him back. Thomas and App State deep in their own territory from the nine. Evans again, trying to stretch it out. Taken down for just a one yard gain. Ty Phillips is there, senior. Got to blow that play up a little bit. Yeah, just a little uh, zone stretch there to the left. And as you said, Ty Phillips, nose guard, good pursuit down the line to make that tackle. How about our first college football playoff rankings come out on Tuesday at 9 o'clock on ESPN, presented by Allstate. I know we're going to get to what you think a little bit later yeah, on, but a lot of the top teams are off this week. They are. So. College football playoff committee is going to have to, you know, hopefully they've been doing their homework all year. I'm sure they have been. Four of the top five teams are idle this week in the top 25. Third and four. Thomas, he gets hit and taken down and sacked. Raymond Johnson, the third for Georgia Southern. That's a loss of three. Well, great coverage in the secondary by Georgia Southern. Zach Thomas had nowhere to go with the ball, and then Raymond Johnson, 92, was able to fight off the block, come back inside as Zach Thomas tries to step up in the pocket and a big sack. Kind of difficult, though, when you start the drive at your own five-yard yeah. line. You're just trying to get some breathing room. They weren't able to get it. Some botches kick. Fair catch called for Kennedy. Backpedaling has it in midfield. And we'll be back after that 41-yard punt. And Georgia Southern back on offense in midfield when we return. 
ESPN Plus is your home for thousands of live events and exclusive originals. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com. And on ESPN Plus next Saturday, or this Saturday, excuse me, Texas State takes on Louisiana and the Rage of Cajuns. They're 5-2 and two on the season. We did that in game one of the season. Almost beat Mississippi State. We sure the did. They're 2-1 and one in the Sun Belt. And that's coming your way Saturday at 5 o'clock Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Georgia Southern, Wesley Kennedy, the third, breaks free and has a first down for the Eagles and into App State territory, run out at the 34-yard line, gain of 16. And again, this offense with a little counter action right there, you could have 10, get, 10 guys on defense do their job. If one guy's eyes go where they're not supposed to and they miss their assignment, you give up big chunks of yardage. And that's what Georgia Southern will do offensively to you with their running attack. Ball spotted at the 33-yard line. I'll probably sit it there, but... King. Muscling his way just inside the 30-yard line. Eagles have dealt with a lot of injuries this season. It was kind of hard to figure out who they are and who they were back then when you lose your offensive yeah. lineman, you lose a running back. Words, the quarterback was banged up for a couple games. Yeah, you know, every team right around this time is going to experience injuries. These ones have hurt Georgia Southern. Logan Wright, a big loss uh, at the running back position. But when you lose a couple offensive linemen, not only are you losing good players, but you're losing the continuity that goes with that group, which is almost bigger than losing the player itself. Got Matt LaRoche, Wesley Kennedy, and G.D. King all lined up behind Wurtz. It's a fake to King. Wurtz on the keeper. He's brought down for a loss in the backfield. Akeem Davis Gaither. With an outstanding play. Yeah, and that's one right there. If you're shy words, that last second you want to try to pitch that to your running back. That's basically a full house backfield. You got triple backs behind in the set. And they're just going to run option left, a little fake inside. But a great job by Gaither, uh, who is no doubt the best defensive player on that App State team. Georgia Southern. 58 yards, just 19 for App State thus far. They're one for two on third down. Here we go with a third and seven. Works on the pass. It's caught from the 20-yard line and a first down catch by Mark Mashad. As Wirtz goes to the air for the first time tonight, and they get the catch for 16. Well, you know, Wirtz says, I'm not just a runner. I'll sling it, too, as he shows you his arm strength. As the secondary for App State gave Michaud a lot of room. And I tell you what, Wirtz put it on them. And they keep this drive alive. Yeah, we showed his numbers earlier. I mean, he's passed for over 2,000 yards in his career. He's approaching 2,000 rushing yards as well. And Georgia Southern trying to get on the board first here tonight, first and 10. Wirtz options it out to King. Inside the 10-yard line, run out by Davis Gaither again. A little speed option that time from Georgia Southern. That's the thing, boy. It's just it's difficult for a defense because they were run option at you three, four different types of way, Mike. Different sets, different formations, different motions. they done here over this time think about this number this number right here they haven't allowed a TD in the last 29 opponent possessions yeah, pretty good right yeah. I mean this defense and they've progressively this defense have gotten better from game one till now I mean they really are, are, are playing nicely as a defensive unit but they're up against it here against this Georgia Southern team tonight gonna try to hold Georgia Southern to a field goal attempt it's a third down and six Works, floats it to the end zone, and it's incomplete, but a flag is down. And he wanted Mark Mashad. I wonder if they're going to say this ball wasn't catchable, because, boy, it seemed like it was high out of the end zone. 
if they wave this off or they call a uh, maybe a defensive holding or they stick with pass interference. We'll see. Pass interference, defense, number eight. Ball occurred in the end zone, ball to place the two yard line, first down. Yeah, it's on Shamar Gene Charles, the junior cornerback. And he didn't have to do it. The safety had come over. He had great help over the top. Again, the pass was a little high as well. No reason to grab him. He clearly grabs him. A little arm check in there. Not much. You know, a little ticky tack. But the field judge is there. He drops the flag. You, you made that point about having the help there. And instead, it gives now Georgia Southern a first and goal from the two. Kennedy. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Wesley Kennedy, the third, scores for Georgia Southern. You know, Wesley Kennedy goes 5'10", 180 pounds, but he's got a strong lower body. Watch him keep fighting. He's going to bounce off defenders. You need to wrap up back and wrap him up low. Kennedy does exactly what you should do. Keep driving, keep fighting, and he gets it in for the score. Yeah, he got hit initially there by E.J. Scott in the backfield, but as you said, able to bump off the defender for the touchdown. Let's see what happens here. Will they go for the two-point conversion try? They will kick it. Yes. Yeah, the old muddle huddle. You're yeah. just looking at the numbers. If you have the numbers, you'll snap it and go for the two point conversion. If not, swing it over and kick it. Tyler Bass. And the senior connects on the extra point. 7 0 Georgia Southern. Well, we saw the possessions, right? Of how many times App State has kept the opponent out of the end zone. Georgia Southern snaps that. We got a good one here in Boone. Appalachian State has not trailed by more than seven points all season long. They give up the early touchdown to Georgia Southern here with 4.03 to go first quarter. Again, we talked about it, right? Rivalry game, doesn't matter what the records are of these teams. They've been going at it for a long time, and we knew this was going to be a tough one tonight. Georgia Southern beat them by 20 last year as this kick goes out of the back of the end zone. Well, I can't wait for this one on Saturday night. You and I have done this game before. SMU and Memphis. It'll be a lot of fun. Two ranked teams. Game day is going to be there in Memphis, Tennessee on Saturday. And it's Saturday Night Football presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. The last time the Mustangs won eight straight to start a season, the Pony Express back in 1982. Yeah, two dynamic offenses going at it. And the difference in that game, Mike, which defensive unit can step up and make a play, steal a possession or two. I think that's going to be the difference in that one. That should be a great ball game. Memphis has just the one loss on that questionable catch, no catch in that Temple game where they lost by just a couple. And it's first down to 10 for App State and Georgia Southern's defense is all over it here tonight. Reinhard Ellis getting in there to take down Evans. That is the eighth play run tonight by Appalachian State. And they've only got 14 total yards. Well, and that's Ellis just scraping from his linebacker position, beats the block and gets to the ball carrier for the TFL. And that's just good football. Their first play of the game went for 14 yards actually as well. And since then they've run seven plays for no yards. So what happens here? Second down and 15. As Thomas gets a pass out and the catch is made by Malik Williams. And that's a nice grab. That's going to be just shy of the first down. As we said, remember, the Eagles beat the Sap State team last year 34-14. to They forced five turnovers in that game, and that was their first ever win over a ranked opponent. App State had just gotten ranked 25th in the nation the week before. Yeah, when you get that many takeaways in a game, you know, you're going to win the ball game. Very, very rarely can someone turn it over five times and, not, and, and come out with a win. So that's a great job. Last year by Georgia, South, Georgia Southern on defense. Brandon Johnson, the third, and number 92 for Georgia Southern, just kind of jogged off the field there. App State, with the third down, they're 0 for 2 tonight, third and three. Thomas, keeper, and he takes a big hit, but he should have enough for the first down across the 35 yard line. Uh, we talked about his toughness earlier, and, and this is what I love. He understands the situation down in distance. He says, I'm going to put my head down, I'm not sliding. I'm going to get these couple yards. I'm going to pick up this first down, and I'm going to move the chains. And that's leadership right there and toughness out of your quarterback, which you love. 
Such a competitive player. One of five FBS quarterbacks last year with 20 plus passing touchdowns, 10 plus rushing touchdowns as well. So you know he can do it in both facets. And I think he's a better athlete than people give him credit for. Sure. Again, goes back to Evans. I like the way that he kind of bursts from the backfield and gets shoved back. Let's see, they're going to have to break up some of the players here. No flags are thrown. Kendrick Duncan Jr. on the tackle. Wrapped him up. What do you think here? Well, you're, it's going to be chippy this game, obviously, right? Because we talked about the robbery and you talked about the burst from Evans and you know it, it, it wasn't that much by Kendrick Duncan but he did kind of pick him up we've seen that call this year we have we definitely have and so I'm kind of surprised it wasn't just to set the tone early from the official saying hey we're not going to take any funny business guys but it wasn't no, I think something's wrong well, I, Evans has got to come off I the think his helmet might have popped off at the end there and because there's no penalty call, he's got to come out for a play. The officials alerted him to that and said, you got to go out here for at least this one play. Second down and short. So they bring in Marcus Williams Jr. He gets the call, and he is going to be just shy of the first down for App State. Third and less than a yard on the way. about the rush defense by the Eagles this season. Yeah, pretty good, right? I think they're allowing about 133 yards a game. This one, there it is. First and some though. Third down from the 44. Again, it's Marcus Williams Jr., but they're gonna shut him down, no gain. And Georgia Southern's defense. Running App State in a fourth and one from the 44, and they got a punt. Give credit to 57, Gavin Adcock, the nose guard. He got penetration right over the center and guard, pushed it back, and when the D-line can do that, you're winning the line of scrimmage, then those linebackers can come up. They have a free shot to get to the ball carrier before he reaches to the line of scrimmage. Excellent interior line play by the defensive unit there for Georgia Southern. You said it, Adcock was just lying down there too, so you couldn't go on anywhere for the running back there that time, Williams. Lip trot lets this one bounce for Georgia Southern. And it'll be down by the Mountaineers at the 28 yard line. So the Eagles take over with a 7 0 lead and just 15 seconds to play here in this first quarter. App State has scored in the first quarter every game this season, and that's not going to be the case here tonight. Well, they got 15 seconds left, Mike, so <laughs> there may be a chance. But now I'm with you. Listen, impressed defensively up front by Georgia Southern and their linebackers. That defensive front playing lights out in this first quarter. Works. Function out here to LaRoche. And he gets across the 35-yard line. Good strong one. Eight yards on first down. Again, Akeem Davis Gaither on the tackle. That's his third of the night. Check it, his sixth, excuse me. He's been all over the place. That is the end of the first quarter. And we'll step aside. Georgia Southern seven, App State nothing. Mountaineers are one of nine remaining undefeated teams. Eagles are trying to change that here tonight in Boone, North Carolina. It's Halloween. We're back with the second quarter after this. Happy Halloween, start of the second quarter, Georgia Southern 7, App State nothing, and the Eagles have the ball back here to begin the second frame with a second down and short. Just across their own 35-yard line. Words hands off to J.D. King, and he has the first down for the Eagles. How about the third straight game that Georgia Southern's had to play in the rain? It's slightly misting right now, but yeah. they had rain-soaked games the last two weeks. Well, the last couple games was like a monsoon. Last week in Statesboro, boy, it was coming down. As you said, kind of misting, but it's it's raining. So, uh, but the one thing Georgia Southern has shown, they can play in the rain. It, it doesn't affect them. Here at Kent Brewer Stadium tonight, Boone, North Carolina, in the mountains. Zap State has won 13 in a row. Last loss to this Georgia Southern team last year in October. 
LaRoche to the outside. First down run. Man, they are really getting it going on the ground here tonight. I mean, right now, this App State defense doesn't have an answer for them, whether it's option, whether it's zone. That time, LaRoche just presses the hole, bounces it to the right. Excellent speed. Turns the corner, picks up the first down. That's his nickname to come, Speedy LaRoche, and he has the first at the App State 48-yard line. Out of Venice, Florida. Some of that bringing that, some of that Florida speed to Statesboro, Georgia. Wurtz gets it out. Kennedy, who's back in the game and tiptoeing the sideline, gaining another strong run. That is a first down run to the 37 of App State. Yeah, so they're running option right now. It looks like App State has it defended, but then Words pitches it last minute, and then you turn the corner, and guess what? It's another first down. Top 25 matchup with SMU in Memphis Saturday night football with our friends there, Shane Bouchelle and Kenny Gainwell. Yeah, offensive coordinator for SMU, Rhett Lashley, having a great year call of plays. And, of course, Mike Norvell, the head coach of Memphis on the other side, also calls the plays for his team. Big discrepancy here tonight. Georgia Southern averaging 5.8 yards a rush. App State defensively this season is only allowing 3.5. Kennedy, and he has pretty good yardage down to the 32-yard line. So, again, in chunks here in this yeah, game. And, and they're not showing App State anything that they didn't know they were going to see. You see the three backs in the pistol set. Coach Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, said we call that the bobsled look. So they know what's coming at them. It's another thing to know it, and it's another thing to stop it. Right now, this App State defense not having much success. Kennedy and King in the backfield with Wurtz. Second down and short. So many options available here. King. Didn't quite find the hole this time. Nice job by Caleb Sperlin, the junior defensive end. 97 makes a tackle. They take a look at last week, Mike. This is an App State team that's been excellent against the rush. How crazy is this? 87 all of last week, already 104 given up here tonight. Yeah. A little different. Third down. Works, and that pass is knocked down, and it was nearly picked off by Josh Thomas who was thinking six. And if Josh Thomas picks that up, you're right, he's gone. There's nothing but green grass in front of him. He jumps the route, he undercuts it, but he's only able to get one hand on it to knock it away. But boy, if he could have caught that, he would have went the distance. But excellent coverage, great. Reading the quarterback, jumps the route, and defends it. All right, remember this. We said it at the top of the broadcast. 23-mile-an-hour win here tonight, and this kick is going right into it. 49-yard attempt for Tyler Bass. As long of the season is 47, 13 and 19 on the year. This is a deep one. It's got plenty of distance, and it is good. Wow, what a kick from Tyler Bass. And this is actually the largest deficit that App State has now faced this year. Ten points down early on tonight at home. App State down 10 nothing here to Georgia Southern. 11.45 to play second quarter, their largest deficit of this season at 10 points. Remember, they've won 13 in a row with the last loss coming to this Georgia Southern team last year. And they've owned the Eagles here at home, Rudy. They've won five in a row versus them in six of the last eight. Yeah, I mean, they just need to take a deep breath, both offensively and defensively. Offensively, though, they got to get a drive going. You got to get some continuity. See if they can come down and answer Georgia Southern here. Call for the fair catch. And we'll remind you, coming up this week on Sunday, NFL Countdown, Randy Moss, as always, ranks the best catches from this week's college football action, plus an inside look at the NFL's top-ranked defense for the twin brothers who hold down the Patriots' secondary. They've given up just 61 points this season. It's amazing. And Dak Prescott, one-on-one. -on -one. Week 9, 
Kick it off with Sunday NFL Countdown. Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Well, so the offense, let's start there for App State. Averaging 2.9 yards a play. They normally average 6.4 of the season. We expect to have this drive here with Thomas rolling out. Throwing on the run, the pass is batted down. Randy Wade Jr. got a hand on it. Yeah, and, and, and again, they need a spark play, right? They need something. How many times do we see it? They're just kind of going through the motions. They need something out. Eli Drinkwitz rolled out Zach Thomas that time, trying to get him in space, and he did. But Wade Jr. just kind of playing basketball, just watching the eyes, jumps up, knocks it down. They need someone to step up, make a play, and get a little spark for this offense. And that's a direct snap here to Darrington Evans, and that's not going to do much. Just a two-yard gain. I mean, this is an offense that is top 10 in the nation. They're averaging 41 points a ball game well, this season. Right now, there's no doubt. The defensive front of Georgia Southern is winning this game. They are very active with their D linemen getting off the ball, winning at the line of scrimmage, and their linebackers are scraping, coming up hard, almost you know, stepping up, daring App State to say, come on, drop back, start trying to throw it on us. See if they set up a possible screen and a bunch formation to the bottom of the screen. Now man in motion, it's Watson. Zach Thomas with a third down and seven here for App State. Good protection. And this catch is made. They needed that. First down at the 40 by Malik Williams. Maybe that's a spark play there, Randy. We'll, well see. You talked about it. Excellent protection. Zach Thomas was able to scan the field and throw a BB in there to Malik Williams for the first down, and now App State will go with pace after a, a good play. They're gonna get up there and go quick. And it's not gonna help them. What a play here. C.J. Wright on Evans. I guess well, sometimes it works against well, you. Well, we talk about, we see it each week, right? Sometimes you go so fast that maybe you're not ready as an offense, but I tell you who was right, 94, C.J. Wright playing that nose guard position because he just blows through the offensive line for App State and makes a big tackle for a loss. You're right, they weren't ready. I mean, they substituted. That's why the referee stands over the ball. You gotta allow each team to substitute if you're gonna do that, and the guy barely got on the time. It's good to go fast, but go fast with a purpose when it works for you. Right now, it hasn't been good to App State. They put in Raekwon Anderson in the backfield. The pitch goes out to him, giving Evans a breather. Anderson, nice moves here. Flag is thrown, however, and he gets to the 45-yard line. And this may be coming back. We will see. I don't know if it is, just another killer here if you're the App State offense right now. They're trying to get consecutive positive plays, and this could be a real big setback. Holding offense number 60, 10 yard penalty, replay second down. And that's on the center, Noah Hannon. Yeah, and, and really. It's the aggressiveness of this Georgia Southern defensive front. Getting upfield. And you see the center, 60, Noah Hannon, with a takedown there in the middle of the screen. Thomas on the fake. And comes back across the middle of the field and into some traffic there, looking for Colin Reed, the tight end. That didn't work. It'll be third down and 18. And what do you have here? Yeah, well, and Jay Bowdry, the outside linebacker, good pressure on Zach Thomas. And you can just, you can tell the offense is just out of sorts. All the momentum is on the Georgia Southern side of the ball. Eagles have been able to come in here and get this crowd out of the ball game early. 10-0 advantage, third and 18 for App State. From the 32, they got to get to midfield. Thomas, the pressure in his face to try to set up the screen. Hennigan on the catch, and that's going to go nowhere. One yard, if that. Georgia Southern credit their defense tonight. Hands in the air and walking back to the sideline. Raymond Johnson, the third, among others. And it's punt time for the Mountaineers. Well, and that's that predictable safe call, right? On third and long, you either go draw or screen. They went screen, they fake screen left, they come back tunnel screen underneath to the right. But as you said, Georgia Southern defense not fooled, they're there to make the play. And they're play, playing some inspired football tonight. Xavier Sabach to Wesley Kennedy. He's gonna pack him up, his own 21 yard line. Kennedy makes the first man miss, gets by the second. 
And not the third, knocked down hard at the 36 yard line by Mike Price on special teams. But it's Georgia Southern football with pretty good field position and a 10 0 lead here midway through the second. College football brought to you by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. This was Boone Boo it took place yesterday on King Street in downtown Boone, North Carolina. How about this guy? What with the Seminoles? Hey, big Boy, Willie Tiger fan right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got a big one this week, right? They Miami. Do. Miami always a big rivalry. Mean, no, I did not steal any candy from kids, Mike. Yeah. I was out there last night. No, uh, there's plenty of M&Ms and everything up here in the booth uh, here tonight. Happy Halloween, everyone. 8.38 to go in this second quarter. What's going on here bacon. tonight? That was bacon. You ate a lot of bacon this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the fans, you know, they were fired up early, but now they're just kind of staying there in and, and the cold right now. This weather, the way that Georgia Southern's been playing. And finally, the defense steps up. The ball is out. Let's see if this is App State football. Or did they blow the play dead? Coming out of it is DeMarco Jackson with the ball. The play was dead before the ball came out. Okay. Yeah, so they're, they're going to rule his forward progress with stop. So that is not reviewable. Well, you can hear the whistle. As he started coming back, you heard a whistle before it got ripped out. I think that's the, the right call. According you don't think so? Rule, <laughs> I don't think he should have blown the well, whistle. Well, that's, that a, that's the, a different story sure. altogether. Now the crowd's starting to get into it. Second down and 12, Wirtz. And he's going to get some positive yardage here up to the 40-yard line. Gets back some of the yards lost. It's going to be a third down and six. Yeah, and talking to Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, about you know a point of emphasis or a key to his defense, he told me, we need to overlap each other with great effort, and they haven't been doing that. No. I talked about it earlier. When you go against an offense like this, nine, ten guys do the right thing. If one or two don't, you're in trouble. That's where he talks about overlapping each other with great effort. And they're trying to finally fire up the crowd here tonight at Kid Brewer Stadium. This App State team is third best in the nation, and forcing teams to three and outs. They haven't done it well tonight. And third and seven, third and long is not the down and distance this Georgia Southern offense wants to be in. Pressure, Wurtz hit, gets it to Kennedy, and he's going nowhere. And that is more like the App State defense you're used to seeing. No gain. First Georgia Southern three and out here tonight. Well, on 59, Jordan Fair, we hadn't called his name out yet tonight. Great job from that linebacker position to get some speed to the sideline to get to the back. He runs out of room, and that was a good defensive stand for Appalachian State. See if that wakes up the offense a little bit. Thomas Hennigan is back to return the punt from Anthony Beck for Georgia Southern. Hennigan back to the mountain here. Solid kick, fair catch called for, and App State will start deep in their own territory when we come back. Still a 10 point hole here in this second quarter. Ten nothing Georgia Southern over App State with 6:29 to go in the second. The drive chart for App State uh, not looking pretty to say the least thus far, Randy. Well, and we talk about plays or or series early in a game that that really affect the outcome. To me, this is one here for App State. They have to get something going offensively because they've just been horrific thus far. It is the first time this season that App State has been held scoreless in the first quarter all year. Evans, flea flanker, back to Thomas, has a bad streaky down the middle. It's Corey Sutton, and it's broken up, incomplete, as Donald Rollins Jr. was able to get back there and break that play up, and Sutton was thinking touchdown. Wow, and Sutton was there, and it's just, it's a cold, damp night, and Zach Thomas had to throw this ball a long way. It kind of gets held up, and good recovery by Rutledge, 24, for Georgia Southern. But they had the play. If Thomas could have got it out, they're just a long way for that ball to travel. Marcus Williams Jr. in the backfield. He gets the call. Trying to get to the edge of that sideline. Gets hit out of bounds. 
by Reynard Ellis for Georgia Southern. Just a couple yards shy of the first down here. But I love the call by Eli Drinkwitz, right? Talking about a spark play, trying to get him going. They go flea flicker. They just can't convert it. And then a good solid run on second down to get you to third and two here. It looked like for a half a second that Williams is going to try to maybe throw a pass there. Then he went to the outside on the run. Third and two for App State. Coming up on six minutes left in this first half. Quick moving first half. And the give to Williams Jr. again, and he's going to be stifled right at the line of scrimmage. Randy Wade Jr. first on the seed, 47. Again, just very strong up front, 49. Trevor Vleem as well, and they're just they're winning at the point of attack at the point of attack on these short yardage plays. They are just getting the push. Linebackers are filling, and they're just dominating up front right now. Second three and out for App State tonight. And boy, we were talking about the scores first quarter. How about if they don't score this half? The last time that App State's been held scoreless at the half at home was way back in 2006, October 1st, versus the other team from Georgia, Georgia State. And we will take a timeout. We'll be right back. He goes on offense with a 10 0 lead. Happy Halloween, everyone, here on this Thursday night. College football from Boone, North Carolina at App State. 10 0 Georgia Southern. Week 9, Monday Night Football. Don't miss it. Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, and the NFC East leading Cowboys at MetLife Stadium taking on Saquon Barkley and the Giants. That's 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Coverage, of course, begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Dallas has won five straight over the G Men. Late second quarter here. Georgia Southern. Having their way so far with the Mountaineers. It's a three yard run by Wurtz. Oh, by the way, didn't you trade Dak Prescott today in I fantasy? Did, that, so that means he's going to throw for 400 yeah, and like four I was touchdowns. He's bombarded with fantasy <laughs> trades. And I'm like, got a game tonight, guys. <laughs> 37 yard line for Georgia Southern. They got to get to the 44. It's a second down, and they have controlled the clock, yeah. controlled the game. They're not going to be in a hurry. They're just going to. Keep going at the pace they're going. Try to sustain this running attack. J.D. King in the backfield. Trips receivers at the bottom of the stream, but it's King. They've kept it on the ground pretty much all night tonight. And for good reason, it's worked out. It, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they only th they've thrown pass. it one time, and yeah. it was a great completion two. to keep a drive alive. Two tonight. Yep. So very this, efficient when they do pass it. Yeah, and, and this is the spot, you know, where it's so manageable here for them, right? Third down. Third down, a long well, three. A running, here. a running team like this, third and short, you know, they don't, it's a down and distance they're not afraid of. It's when they're third and long, they don't, they're not comfortable in that position. Back just over two, third and two. And it's King. He's got it. He's across the 45-yard line. Jenny King, transfer from Oklahoma State. He spent the preseason on the scout team because they were waiting for his eligibility, and they finally got word about a week and a half before the first game that he was good to go. So. Well, and King is that bigger body back, right? 220 pounds, a nice job running behind the pads, good push up front. Another first down. Want to be closer to Holmes, transferred here to Georgia Southern. He's run well here tonight. First and ten Eagles from the 45. Words. We got the air again down the sideline. And there's a lot of contact there. Do we get a flag? No. There's a look like. We well, got a hat. Yeah, Sean Jolly was kind of holding on to Colby Ransom there. Yeah, he got the hat, which tells you the receiver stepped out of bounds. Quarterback took a hit as well. Shy Words. E.J. Scott was there on pressure. Little hand jock in there, yeah. no call. Let him play, that's what we like. 28 plays tonight by Georgia Southern, 25 runs, three passes. Malik Murray in motion, but the give goes right up the middle. They're getting good running by Wesley Kennedy the third as well, and he is a yard shy of a first. And when they send the back in motion, right, over the top, showing that they may run option it, it just 
it freezes those linebackers because Georgia Southern has had success in offense. Then you come back inside with Kennedy. Nice little run for nine yards. Pretty solid week for him last week, huh? You saw some of the numbers. It's actually snowing here a little bit right now in Boone, North Carolina. Third down and one for Georgia Southern. And they're not going to get it. Demetrius Taylor there makes the play. That time on King. And that's the penetration this App State defense needs from the defensive line. Taylor crashes down. Good push. And they stop, at, they stop Georgia Southern in the backfield. Fourth down and two. Got to keep an eye out for a fake here, potentially. But with a 10-0 lead here for Georgia Southern, their defense playing well. And yeah, they will kick this one away, trying to pin App State deep as their offense has just done nothing, really, in this first half. And again, that's if you're kind of a pet peeve, why even, you know, get that ball? It's going to be inside the 10-yard line. And how about the defense for Georgia Southern? Boy, it's been amazing. Yeah, most impressed uh, uh, with that unit tonight, really, that defensive front, especially D linemen, linebackers. Playing lights out, getting to the quarterback for a sack, getting to the running backs for TFLs. I mean, this is a defensive unit that's given up over 342 yards a game in FBS. Tonight, only 65 allowed thus far. I mean, really, that unit's playing lights out. Yeah, they are. You can add two breakups, three tackles for losses, two three and outs. And of course, they had to get up a point. And here's Evans. And that's a first down run as he gets up to the 24 yard line for App State. They've got to move quickly. Clock is at 141. They do have all three of their timeouts remaining. And we see it a lot of times, right? Offenses that are kind of sputtering, struggling. They go in the two minute offense. They get that pace going. It, it helps them out. Then, of course, it incites the fans because they say, why well, we have to see this all game, right? That's a long play of the day for them. 16 yards. Play fake Thomas. And the catch is made on the outside by Corey Sutton as he spins out of bounds for a first down. Box stops to move the chain to the 35-yard line. Minute 19 remaining. Yeah, the official said his four cars are stopped inbound, so this clock will start once the ball is set, and there it goes. Line. Again, seeing the same well, thing progress. They're going to have to take a timeout here. I'm surprised. The referee said he was in bounds once again. I thought he fought to get out of bounds. Yeah, I did too. I, I never understand that, you know. And they, I well, mean, it looked like he was laying on a body of a defender, and he fought to crawl over him to get out of bounds. But timeout by App State. They had all three. Half time, 52 seconds away as Georgia Southern leads App State 10 0 here. Gonna be a second down and one. We'll have a little bit of a spooky prank that was played to Pittsburgh. I can't wait to see what that's all about coming up in the half. And then West Virginia and Baylor, that's the other undefeated team in action here tonight. Baylor going on right now as well. Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer in the studio for the halftime report coming your way in just a little bit. So stay tuned for that. We get two yep. of the nine undefeated teams in action on this Halloween night. Baylor winning that one, 7 nothing in the second. Matt Rule's group playing very well this season. This half state team trying to remain undefeated. They're 7-0. They've won 13 straight, third longest in the nation. They're in trouble so far here in this first half as Malik Williams makes the catch. And finally, for the first time in this game, they've crossed midfield. Prior to that, their longest was their own 44-yard line in this first half. Yeah, and I think this rhythm, this pace that they're going at is helping this offense. Good throw there by Zach Thomas back across the field, showing his arm strength as he gets it to Malik Williams, as you said, finally across the 50. 46-yard line of Georgia Southern. Evans in the backfield. The pass goes out quickly, though, from Thomas, and the catch is made by Hennigan. And do they have to use another timeout here? Yes, they do. Was spotted at the 39-yard line, three yards shy of a first, but that's going to be their second timeout taken. They'll have one left.
timeout. Appalachian State, they're second. It'll be 30 seconds. 37 of game clock, please. Thank you. How about our college football rankings brought to you by Goodyear here tonight with our AP top 10. She's for the fourth well, top five or off. I don't wins this week, right? Yeah. I mean, I can't wait for that, you know, Florida-Georgia game. That's a, a great game in the SEC East, played in Jacksonville. Really looking forward to that one. And then, of course, Utah-Washington, another big game. And you look at the top ten, you see Utah and Oregon. You got two Pac-12 teams that really are still in this thing. I like Oregon. Their one loss was to Auburn in the first game of the season. I'm a little surprised. I'm not quite understanding the number nine ranking for Utah. And I think they're going to run up against it at Washington out. The thing about Oregon is Mario Cristobal is the head coach, or the head coach there. Coach at Alabama for a long time under Nick Saban. He kind of brought that attitude, that philosophy to Oregon. Play tough defense, run the ball. A little different than what you expect out of the Pac-12. Fans trying to get into it a little bit here tonight with 37 seconds to go. It's a second down and three for App State. Zach Thomas, the quarterback on this drive, is four for four for 37 yards. He started three of eight for just 25 yards, so he's picking it up here. And then a complete catch by Thomas Hennigan, and he is out of bounds. Yes, they will say he went out of bounds this time and stopped the clock with 31 seconds left. Well, that's huge, right, saving that time out. You gotta keep that last time out in your back pocket. Remember, they are going with the wind here, so not a problem kicking it. Thomas taking a shot over the middle of the traffic, and it's incomplete. Man, that would have been a tough catch to make by Hennigan, and he almost had it too, but well, the white jerseys And you there. hear the boo bucks because it looked like Brinson, number four, might have contacted Hennigan before he catches it. You know, hands on him early, looks back. I think he might have got away with one there. I think he bumped him a little early. The officials don't call it. And, I, and why he got away with it is because he turned that head around mm -hmm. and looked back. 25 seconds to go. Second down and 10. Thomas again, quick throw to the outside. And got to get out of bounds. And he does. Well, look, Williams is not going to draw a flag. A little extra shove there, no. But it's going to be first down and 10 for App State now with 20 seconds to go. And now you got plenty of time with 20 seconds. You got about four or five plays. Still got that timeout. That'll help them out. And I mean, and, you know, we see it each week. It's just amazing, right? The offense kind of pathetic up until this point. And now you go hurry up offense two minutes and they look great. Different unit going fast, spreading it around. Looks good. How much does the defense, though, play into that, right? Because everybody's saying, yeah, what's the deal? Why don't we see this earlier? Is the defense playing off? Well, what are you I, I, I think it's a combination of both. Yeah, the defense kind of steps back a little bit, but I think the pace going like that, knowing you're going to spread out and throwing it, it prevents uh, that, that dominant D-line that we've seen in defensive front getting after Zach Thomas. Quick throws to the outside. Crazy numbers here. First four drives of the night for App State. 58 yards. This drive has already gone 77 yards and they have a first and 10 from the Georgia Southern 15-yard line with that one timeout left and 20 seconds yeah. to go. Obviously, it's imperative that App State gets points here. Not to be Captain Obvious, they want a touchdown. They want a lot of momentum going into half. And if they can get six, that'll give it to them. Still plenty of time on the play clock, 10 seconds. Possibly changing of the play here with Zach Thomas from the gun. Block picked up by Evans, pass to the end zone, deflected, and is it picked off? They'll say incomplete. No, it hit the turf. Reynard Ellis almost had it, and it was deflected right into his hands by Monquavian Brinson, number four there. Well, and it looked like it was going to be a touchdown, but what a play by Brinson, number four, to reach back and bat that thing away as his teammate almost comes up with the interception. You know, looking at it from the box, I thought it was in there. It was going to be a touchdown, but boy. That's just athleticism from Brinson, number four. Second down. Thomas has a man in the end zone, and it is caught, and it's a touchdown. Malik Williams hangs on for the score.
What a catch by Malik Williams. You know, when Zach Thomas was under pressure, when he rolled out to the right, he didn't see him until the last second. He throws and he's able to keep those toes in bounds, make the catch, bring it in, survive the ground, and that's one heck of a touchdown. He had his hands underneath it. He was the one to point it out to me. Yeah. Like, head zone, head zone. Guys yeah, I was open. pointing up here because yeah. I could see him. To me, he controlled the ball. Feet are in. He falls to the ground. The ball can touch the ground as long as it doesn't jar or move out of his hands. To me, I didn't see anything that would overturn that touchdown. Thomas on that drive was seven of nine for 76 yards. And if this stands, extra point pending. App State able to drive with uh, under two minutes to get the six. And I think he has it. I mean, you have control of the ball. If you have control of the ball, right? And you go down. The, you go. the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Yeah, they confirmed yeah. it. And they get it quick. Yep. Which we like. Touchdown, App State. Much like this game, going very quick. It is. Reviews quick. Second touchdown catch of the season for Williams. It gives the fans something wow, to shoot. Boy, did App State need that, right, for some momentum going into halftime and got ourselves a ball game. Chandler Staten for the extra point. And we've got a three-point ball game now. And you talked about this rivalry, right? This is the last team to beat this App State team, Georgia Southern. It's been 13 wins in a row for App State, one of nine remaining undefeated teams in the country this season. And it's a three-point ball game. Yeah, and it was just scramble rules on that touchdown. When the quarterback comes towards you, you just go long. That's what Malik Williams did. He posts it up in the end zone. Zach Thomas, good quarterback, has his head up as he turns the corner, sees Williams, puts it on him, and a much-needed touchdown for Appalachian State. You 92 yards. Well, you talked about this rivalry. This rivalry goes way back. Mm -hmm. I saw, talked about it earlier. One double A. It wasn't even FCS back then. Both these programs were dominant at the 1AA level, and it's, I love that the rivalry is carried forward to the FBS and them here in the Sun Belt. Georgia Southern won six FCS national championships. App State won three, three in a row. Some amazing players back in the day there in 05, 06, 07. Last FCS championship for Georgia Southern back in 2000. They had some talented guys, no doubt. 35th meeting between these two here tonight. And you feel like App State's got an old one. They lost to this team 20 point loss last year. It's only one of two losses for them. There you go with the Sun Belt Championships, too, for App State. Won four straight bowl games as well. A lot on the line for them here tonight. This kick goes into the end zone. You have talked about it at the top of the broadcast about. The highest ranked conference champion from the group of five gets a New Year's Six Bowl game, and that's what App State is playing for. Yeah. There's so much for them here this season. Yeah, so much going on, uh, you know. But first and foremost, and that's why Eli Drinkwitz talks about winning, you know, one, and, one a week. It's all you can do. Can't look ahead. Just got to get it done. Georgia Southern is going to receive the ball to start the second half as well. And they've got a pretty good streak of their own going at the half. They have won 16 straight games when leading at the half. Does that hold up here tonight? It's only a three-point lead. We'll see. Halftime here in Boone. Let's go to the studio. Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer for the halftime report. Guys, it's all you. Halloween night on this Thursday from Boone, North Carolina. Fans dressed up at Kit Brewer Stadium. 
10-7, Georgia Southern with a three-point lead. And some bad costumes here, looking pretty good. They finally had something to cheer about at the end of the first half with App State scoring. Coming out earlier this morning, a great story from our ESPN's Ryan McGee on ESPN.com about these App State Mountaineers. Yeah, and it really chronicles where this program came from, where they are today. And Ryan McGee does a great job, whether it's in print, does a great job on TV, too. He's got the show, Marty and McGee. Excellent job, but it's, it, he, he did a great job on this university. Here's a quote from Eli Drinkwitz. Part of that, he says, I know about the criteria. you got to be the conference champion, the highest ranked group of five. You know, gets to go to that New Year's Six bowl game. And, he, you know, like you just said a moment ago, you got to win your conference. That's kind of first and foremost. So you got to win this game here tonight, and then they got a big one next week. And remember, he's a first-year head coach, right? So he was offensive coordinator last year at North Carolina State. He's a first-year head coach now. You're starting to feel all the pressure, right? You're nationally ranked. You want to win your conference. You're getting talked about. You got, you know, ESPN coming up doing national articles on your program. So a lot going on for a first-year coach. Now the big one next week is South Carolina. So again, you got to win your conference. You see the third longest active win streak right now in the nation behind Clemson and Ohio State. But how big is that game? Say they can get this one tonight. That's monstrous well, next week. And I'll jump it ahead, and he would not want me, Eli no. Drinkwitz would not want me to do that. But if they can get this one tonight and they can go get a win at South Carolina on the road, they would be the only group of five team in the country to beat two Power Five programs on the road. They've already beat North Carolina at North Carolina. So that would be huge for the college football playoff committee to take into consideration if App State can win out. But you know, putting the putting the cart before the horse a little bit, but boy, a lot of stuff going on. And that's why when you're Eli Drinkwitz, you say, I don't, I don't even want to think about that stuff one game at a time, one week at a time, well, one half at a time now, because they need to try to come back and win this one for any of that. Fair catch in Chandler Staten's kickoff. Georgia Southern in that first half. Their first 22 plays, they were able to amass 128 yards, and they got 10 points. Then their last 10 plays, just 21 yards and no points, and to your point about the App State defense. Yeah, we talked about the offense, but the App State defense played much better towards the end, too. And again, I'll get back to what Coach Ted Roof said. We have to overlap each other with great effort. I don't think they were doing that early, and uh, that's the key, really, to stopping this triple option attack. Wesley Kennedy and J.D. King start in the backfield behind Shy Wirtz. Works option at the king, and he is met by Josh Thomas. Heads up. And Josh Thomas is a senior safety. He's the leader of that defensive unit, especially on the backside. He's going to fend off the block of the receiver and get there for a form tackle on LaRoche. Excellent job by Josh Thomas. 50th career game tonight that leads all Mountaineers. And with his 35th tackle of the season, one of the top defenders for this group. And they're charged up now. Second down and eight for Georgia Southern. Option the other side. Keeper by Wurtz this time. And nice job to eke out some extra yards. Cross the 30-yard line to the 32. Send it up a third and three. A nice job by Wurtz, their speed option. He sees a little crease, he hits it, picks up what he can, gets it to a manageable third down here, but big play here early in this yeah. second half. App State defense is known to get off the field on third downs. We'll see here. Noel Cook trying to pump up the crowd here tonight in Boone. And they make it a three and out to start the second half. Kennedy, no nope, first down and more. Wesley Kennedy, look out. He's going to try to take it the distance for six, and he's got it. Georgia Southern touchdown with Wesley Kennedy for 68 yards. Well, not only do you not get off the field on third down, you give up a huge explosive play. And again, it's just option. Good job by Wurtz, taken to the end, pitches it to Kennedy. Kennedy breaks two tackles, really, two arm tackles, and then it's just speed as he takes it the distance for the touchdown. His second longest run of the season for Wesley Kennedy, the third, as he had a 71-yarder earlier this season, and that's his sixth rushing touchdown. 
App State had the momentum at halftime. There's a flag down here. Check it. That's his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. He had that first score earlier. This will get the call. After the play was over, on sportsmanlike conduct, on the defense, number 48, and 15 yard penalty, we forced on the kickoff. Well, we ended that first half. Appalachia State had scored a touchdown and got the momentum at halftime. Georgia Southern comes out. First possession of the second half. They take that momentum back. Georgia Southern leads it 17-7. Seventeen to seven now. Georgia Southern leading App State early third quarter. And how about Wesley Kennedy? 139 yards rushing for Georgia Southern. That's the most allowed by App State defense this entire season. Just got a second touchdown. Yeah, an explosive plays. Look at that average, 15.4 per carry. Pretty good. And then there was an unsportsmanlike at the end of the play after the touchdown on App State. So kicking off from midfield is Tyler Bass, and he's just gonna try to kick it through the uprights. And it's gonna be first and 10 for App State. UFC 244 at Madison Square Garden features the card of the year. The main event is on pay-per-view. Jorge Masvidal taking on Nate Diaz. Battle of the welterweights. That starts at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNBoss.com slash PPV. And be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. Some tough dudes right there. Yeah, no doubt. Saturday coming up at 10 p.m. Eastern. All right, so App State, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line, now trailing by 10 again. And Thomas with a quick little play fake, and the pass is low and incomplete for Thomas Hennigan. And just kind of like the game started, right? Had a receiver, just can't connect, goes incomplete. A few drops today by these App State receivers, uncharacteristic. Counted at least three by App State receivers. Evans in the backfield. He gets the call, and he's going to get really not much at all. Bought it up. And they really haven't got Darrington Evans going tonight either. He's had a couple runs, but really, you know, Georgia Southern has done a nice job keeping Evans in check. It was only the last drive of that first half where App State had their way and get on that Georgia Southern defense. Other than that, they've been stout up front. Third down and nine here. Thomas with a deep drop. And they go underneath, and that's not gonna do much. And Darrington Evans with a catch, which is gonna be a three and out. And it's unbelievable. It's really the other way around that App State has forced the opponents into three and outs this season, and they're the ones that have been having wow. three and outs themselves. Tonight. Yeah, and Jay Bowdry, number five, the linebacker, read that perfectly, made the play. May have been injured in doing so. Yeah, so Bowdry will get a 10 to two here. Fourth and 11 for App State. Yeah, Bowdry plays what they call their anchor position. It's kind of a hybrid between an outside linebacker and a safety. Great recognition, though, on that pass play. Read it, reacted to it, made the play. So Bowser's going to be all right. Very early third quarter. But Georgia Southern's going to get this ball back with a 10-point lead, and they'll do that when we return. More footage here for the Magic Giant concert on campus earlier today, sponsored by Mars Candy. A great event here that they have on Halloween, and we thank Mars for their support. They even made us Eminem helmets Look at those here things. for tonight. Look at this. That's awesome. Can we uh, bite into them after I, the I game? Or what? I was like, that looks great. Really, really nice touch. Are they edible? They're, well, they're, they're wet. 
Eminem's got a ball on top of the helmet. A little wet. Didn't stop. It never stopped you before, Mike. Say, the Eminem's candy's been going out like crazy up here in the press box. Been looking around for the baskets in there. Just for the record, I haven't eaten any candy tonight. <laughs> I just want to say that. Good it's, deal. Fly, it's flying everywhere up here. Good deal. Fourth down and 11 for App State as we come back from the timeout. Jesse Liptrot is back to return this kick from Xavier Sabach. He's standing just inside of his own 40 yard line. And it'll be favorable field position for the Eagles on this next set. Offense tonight. They've been moving the football. That's what they do. They run the ball. And tonight they've got 200 rushing yards. You come in as the second leading rushing team in all of the land. Yeah, I mean, they're right on pace for, for what they do. And they're just successful at it more times than not. And it's that triple option we talked about. If one guy's not where he needs to be, you give up some big plays. And they've given up a bunch of chunk plays tonight as App State on and defense. And I should say second in the FBS of the last three games with their average of 337. They've had 34 plays tonight, make it the 35th play, and 32 runs. And they just keep it going. This is J.D. King, and he's up close to midfield. And I love the change of pace. You get a lot of Wesley Kennedy, number 12, and then boom, 15, J.D. King gets a carry. A little more power in the middle. Don't forget about our Saturday primetime game to, on Saturday night with SMU and Memphis. Two ranked teams doing battle, undefeated SMU, and a one-loss Memphis team. That's going to be a lot well, of fun. And you saw Shane Bouchelle there in the pop-up. Great quarterback and Kenny Gainwell running back. Game day will be there in Memphis on Saturday. Second down, Georgia Southern. There's movement. And here comes the flag. Ball start. Offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. That's the first Georgia Southern penalty of the night. Yeah, first false start, too. I mean, I, I can't remember the last game we called where we're into the third quarter before right. we get a false start. So, uh, game's been played, you know, very nicely, basically by both teams, really. A couple more penalties for App State, but Georgia Southern, phenomenal. Fourth total penalty of the night. That's it. Four minutes gone by third quarter. Eagles face with a second and seven. Fake to King, keeper by Words. He's got space. Nobody's there again for App State. Shy Words, the quarterback. It's a touchdown. Another monstrous run by the Eagles. 55 yards on that one for the score. Yeah, and explosive plays will kill you. They're just going to go option. They motion the other back around. I mean, there is no one in the vicinity of Shy Words whatsoever until he gets to the end zone. Explosive plays will deflate a defense in a hurry. Georgia Southern's had a few tonight. This last one by quarterback Shy Works. App State fans, not very happy. But Georgia Southern fans, on the other hand, wins out. Mayhem begins the college football playoff top 25 ranking show Tuesday at 9 on ESPN. Well, speaking of mayhem, we've got it here tonight. 24 to 7, Georgia Southern leading App State, undefeated App State, who's won 13 in a row with their last loss coming to this Eagles team back last October. They're going to try to knock them off in the ranks of the unbeatens, one of nine still undefeated teams in the country. And how about uh, you uh, with Mayhem beginning, Rini? What do you got well, for your top and, four? And for the record, I was accused of, of having the same top four as the AP. I had these four before the AP jumped LSU to go. number one. But listen, Mayhem, we're talking about, right? LSU is going to play Alabama in a couple weeks. Ohio State has to play Minnesota. They still have to play Penn State. Florida plays Georgia this week. Mm -hmm. So a lot is going to happen. That's why I love this sport. Love November. Lots going to change there. I know you and I like that Florida team. You know, they play tough competition this year. 
They're getting it done. We'll see what happens this weekend. That's a big game. Look at this. Tackle again in the backfield by Randy Wade Jr. on Evans. And that's been a scene happening far too often here tonight if you're an App State fan. Fifth, Georgia Southern tackle for loss in this one. And there's an injured player down. It's Reynard Ellis. The middle linebacker for the Eagles. Well, and the thing that's impressed me about Georgia Southern defensively, we've called out a bunch of different guys, a bunch of different jersey numbers, making plays, making TFLs. How about the last three plays by Georgia Southern? 68 yard touchdown by Kennedy. Then they got an eight yard run. Then they got a 55 yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Wirtz. 131 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, What's I going mean, on when, you, when you're a defensive coordinator up in the, in the booth and you see these big plays, it's just it's a nightmare for you and really what it is is we saw in the one option a couple arm tackles you come in there and it's one thing you give up eight nine yards you got to make the tackle you can't give up the 67 yards but when shy Wirtz ran no one was even there no one touched him you got to get to your assignments no one there the previous one one of their secondary guys is like overrunning the play yeah. you are the last line of defense you got to get in front of him and make a play now what do they do on offense here this is not like an app state offensive team well, either they've been horrible on first down and that's that's been a big issue because we talk about it all the time staying ahead of the chains and you, you know you get a tfl on first down on second and long thomas airs it up top and complete and no flags looking for thomas hennigan yeah nice coverage there by jesse liptron i like how he goes up He's got the hands up in the air. He makes sure he's not going to grab the receiver. He's going to body him a little bit. But it's kind of like a jump ball. I, I try to explain to people all the time. It, that ball is just as much to the defender as it is the offensive player. He, he can go get it. Goes up there. A little body, but no call, and rightfully so. And it's now a third down and 13 for App State. They'll spread him out. Thomas with time, and the catch is made. He's got his receiver, Thomas Hennigan, for the first down. And they needed that in a big way, and he found a gap in the defense there. Yeah, a little corner route there. Thomas puts it on him. Good protection up front. Gave Zach Thomas time. Hennigan's able to run his route. He's going to get out to the corner. They got a route underneath, a route over the top, and Hennigan comes in between, and good job by Thomas to put him on him. A much-needed first down. For App State. Longest play of the night for App State of 29 yards. Evans. I'm going to credit the defense for Georgia Southern yet again. Traver Vleem on the tackle. Team player of the week for the last two straight weeks for them. And they have really shut down Evans tonight. Very active up front is that defensive line for Georgia Southern. And they're just getting across the face of the offensive lineman for App State, beating, to, beating them to the point of attack and making plays. Evans is barely averaging three yards a carry. He's got 12 carries for 37 yards tonight. Thomas trying to get away from pressure. It's still throw it. he does. He's got Corey Sutton on the catch, and Sutton's able to get the first down. And that's all Thomas there keeping that well, ball. Alive. And good strength by Zach Thomas. It, it was close to his right knee being down, but he's able to fight through and get the pass off just in time. And now it's swinging out here from Malik Williams, who had a touchdown catch earlier. And that's just about a three, maybe four yard game. And I think Eli Drinkwitz needs to get the pace going, yeah. just like they did before. The first half ended. Get going with some pace, because I just think they're better tonight against this Georgia Southern defensive front with quick passes, getting to the outside. What about some of the screen games? Surprised I haven't seen guys out in space yeah. and just trying to make some plays with their athleticism. And, just, and speed it up if you can. I just think that's worked best for them against this defense. Now the wide out sweep here with Jalen Virgil. And that's going to gain maybe a yard if that. So they try to get him out in space there. And he's a track guy, and he's super fast. Fastest guy on the team, number 11 for App State. But again, great recognition by the linebackers. I believe 32, Chris Harris was there as well. 
We should say temperature has dropped tremendously yes. from the first half to the second half. You see, you see the coaches on side. A lot of thicker coats out there now. Well, we had snow for a few minutes earlier in this ball game, and up to almost 30 mile an hour winds. Third down and six. It was 62 degrees earlier today. You and I were out there with shorts on. What were we doing? Evans on the carry makes the first man miss and the second. And he breaks free. Darrington Evans, first down inside of the Georgia Southern 15 yard line. Yeah, and that's all Darrington Evans. Number seven, Lane Ecton has a chance at him. He's able to break that tackle in the backfield. Gets to the outside and breaks another tackle. That's just an excellent run by Evans. Essentially four missed tackles there at Georgia Southern defense, but that's the best run of the night for Evans. Ups the average by a full yard after that play. First and ten in the red zone now for the Mountaineers. Evans, and no gain there. Good job by Wright. C.J. Wright. And Wright is still down. Coming off the field. 6.28 to go in this third quarter. Second down and 11 upcoming for App State. And this App State offense only averaging 3.2 yards per first down play. Three TFLs by Georgia Southern. Just getting great penetration from that defensive line spot. We're calling a bunch of different defensive line guys out as well. And they all showed up to play tonight here in Boone. They really have. Correct snap. And now a little trickery. It's off to Williams. And Malik Williams. Ended up getting about a couple yards on the play. They snapped it right to Hennigan. And then Malik Williams. Just a short game. But even those little reverse plays like that that usually, you know, are successful yeah, for big gains, even those ones seem like they're yeah. struggling to pick up yards tonight. I mean, a field goal can certainly help you, but I mean, you're half stupid. Well, like, we got to get a touchdown. Uh, I think going. it depends on what you pick up here on third down. If you don't pick up anything, I think you kick it, you get it back to two touchdowns. There's still a lot of time left in this game. I mean, they're top 10 of the country, scoring in 94% of their red zone opportunities. Thomas and miscommunication there. He had Evans open. That's going to be fourth down. Yeah, and I think you kick it. You didn't gain any yard. You get it back to two touchdowns. And then you put it back on your defense. Hey, defense, get us a stop. Get us a three and out that you're known for. Get us the ball back. Get the three here. Try to get it back to two touchdowns. Yeah, you certainly got to get some points. Staten is on for the field goal attempt. It's going to be a 29-yarder. Seven of nine on the season is Staten. Field goal try is up. And it is no good. Did not get it. Stays 24-7 and Georgia Southern survives. One of the better jobs by App State tonight to get the ball into opponent territory, but they come up empty. So all the way down for the field goal try. No good from 29. Eagles still well in command. Twenty-four to seven, Georgia Southern with the advantage after the missed twenty-nine yard field goal. And once again, this play here on first down and ten for the Eagles, as they have been breaking free up the middle, and King does it again, and he's got good yardage up to the thirty-seven yard line of first down and way more, seventeen yards. Last time that App State lost the game to Georgia Southern. Last October it was a twenty point win. Boy, it's trending in that direction again here yeah, tonight. I mean, huh? 13 wins since that one for App State, but that's what rivalry games do. 
Last four plays for Georgia Southern, they've amassed 148 yards, including two touchdowns, one of 68 yards and one of 55 yards. Words. And once again, it's going to be a first down run. Oh, they're going to mark him just shy. Nine yard pickup. Boy, they don't really seem to have an answer in App State defense. Well, time. and their success on first down, Georgia Southern, light years different than what App State's doing on first down. You're getting big chunk yardage on first down. It just, it helps you tremendously. And their running attack, they're pretty much able to do what they want tonight. LaRoche and King in the backfield. King again. It's first down. 48. We talked about what App State was averaging on first down, right? 3.2 or so. It's 6.6 .6 on the other side for the Georgia Southern Eagles. That's the difference. Georgia Southern's gone up against undefeated teams this year, right? They know. LSU, Minnesota, yeah. now App State. And they were in that Minnesota game. They had a chance to win that game. this time and gets to App State's 45 yard line. It was a tough team for Georgia Southern to kind of figure themselves out early. I mean, they started with LSU, number one team in the country right now. Then you go play an FCS team in Maine, right? Yeah. Then you come back to go to Minnesota. Then you got Louisiana. It was but you start one place. and three. You've won your last three, so you're trending in the right direction. And I tell you, they're doing a nice job. Bob DeBess, the offensive coordinator, controlling the line of scrimmage, running the clock down. Control on the clock. Second down, LaRoche again. Should be right at the marker. We'll see who they spot this one. Maybe just, just short. Yeah, shot. just short. But what are they doing? They're using up time. Taking Control their time. The and, again. and again, the way they've run the ball at the middle. I say give it to your big back once again. You know, give it to a J.D. King. And say, go get me a yard, big boy. Win, it's crazy here tonight right now. Gusts have picked up. Three hundred rushing yards tonight for Georgia Southern. And another first down here. King has it. I'll tell you this, it's imperative if App State is to, I mean, if they're going to get any points, Georgia Southern in this drive, it has to be a field goal. Yeah. A touchdown, I would say, the way it's been, it's going to be over. First time allowing 300 rushing yards since November 5th, 2015 versus Arkansas State. Yeah, crazy. And you talk about this rivalry, you talked about the last time App State lost. How about when they were both FCS teams in 2010? App State was 8-0. Who beat them? Georgia Southern. So this rivalry goes back a while. Works. And this time he's corralled. Still able to muscle about a couple yards. George Blackstock and company with a tackle. But worst case scenario, I mean, they're up by 17. They're going to get this game into the fourth quarter already just by getting the first downs right. that they've gotten on this possession. And that's going to ask a lot yeah. of the App State offense to get three scores. That's what Georgia Southern does. I mean, they run the clock when they're ahead. They're doing it again here tonight. Second down. Wurtz on uh, the option for LaRoche. And gets cut down the 30-yard line, but that's right where the first down marker is at. And that looks like that's going to be good enough for another first. And it's just perfect execution. You run the play clock down. You go option to the short side. Wurtz holds it, picks it to LaRoche. And I love how he squares his shoulders, gets up the field, takes on the tacklers, and gets the first down. Real gusty and windy and rain, mist, and even a little bit of snow coming down here now in Boone, North Carolina. Possibly the last play of the third. And again, LaRoche 
No game this time. Uh, that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. And Georgia Southern, how about 17 straight runs, Rooney? You keep doing it until they stop you. Well, if you like running and you're a running back like me, you love this Georgia Southern offense. 15 minutes away are the Eagles from pulling off yet another upset over App State. It would end a 13-game winning streak if they can do it. 15 minutes on the clock and we return. What a crazy night here tonight. Halloween 24 to 7. Georgia Southern leading App State start of the fourth quarter. And the rowdy fans here tonight, but it was 62 degrees earlier today. It's down to 35. Wind gusts of 30 miles an hour. We got a rain and snow mix now as Georgia Southern begins the fourth quarter with a run that gets them down to the 25 yard line. And JD King. And they have had their way, and you got to bundle up here tonight. Get a little chilly in the booth, yeah. but it's all right. We're all close to each other, nice and warm up here. And you can see the snow coming down here. Has some kind of it's football weather <laughs> infiltrated the booth, though. We're doing okay. It is football weather. It's football weather, but of course I can say that because I'll be on a plane going back to Florida tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So it's great, Lucky guy. Final day of October. Can't believe we're into November. Third down here for Georgia Southern. Third and six. King's the back, and he'll shut him down. So App State going to force a field goal try here on a fourth down and four. Or will they? I mean, with this weather, right? I mean, with the wind soaring around, do you even go for the but, field goal? You know, but Tyler Bass is such a good field goal kicker, and he's already blasted one into this goal post before and, and the wind is in his face though and it is swirling much more uh, than it was when he kicked the field goal earlier in the game. And this could be dicey here. 41 yard attempt for Bass. You're right. He just cut it right through. We'll see if he does it again. They tried to block it. Got plenty of distance but this one is no good. Pushed it right and the wind just kind of took it that way. So App State survives this drive and they'll take over still down 24 to 7. Yeah, the wind just absolutely took this one, pushes it off to the right, upright, and the App State defense holds. Eagles up 24 to 7, fourth quarter, still tons of time left. Fans are top ranked boxing main event Saturday night is for the WBC Junior Lightweight title. The champ Miguel Burchell defends his belt for the sixth time against former WBA Super Featherweight champ Jason Sosa. 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific from Carson, California on ESPN, the ESPN app at ESPN Deportes on Saturday night. All right, so App State after the missed field goal by Georgia Southern. What do you have here? As they've got first down and 10 from the 24 yard line. We'll see what they can do. Trying to get something going offensively. Thomas's pass, and it's a sliding catch by Corey Sutton. And they need to up the base to get something going. I mean, their first five possessions of this game, all punts. They got the touchdown, and only two possessions here in the second half. A punt and a missed field goal. So a big play down the middle of the field. Nice sliding catch by the receiver. And that's what you know, and that's what they really haven't done. Those vertical shots right. down the middle of the field need to do it. And they need to do it in a hurry. 22 yards on the reception. Thomas again, and this one's off the mark. Looking for Hennigan, and he thought he got interfered with. No call. Well, and the other thing they really haven't been able to do tonight is follow up a big play with another play. That consistency that when the offense is clicking, you get rolling. Just haven't been able to follow up, you know, consecutive big plays tonight. 92, Raymond Johnson the third is down on the field for Georgia Southern. There's a couple guys down actually. Johnson's one of them. Also, player down for App State as well. Injury timeout, we'll step aside. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. 
And our first college football playoff ranking show coming out on Tuesday. Looking forward to seeing who's going to be a part of the top four for right now. And it comes your way at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Well, I always like to see, too, how much does the college football committee's rankings, how much does it mirror the AP rankings that right. we've been watching all season? Because that's all, all we have to go by right yeah. now is the top 25. Yep. And, the top, and four of the top five teams are off this week. I wonder how much is going to change. We'll see. 24 to 7. Georgia Southern leading App State here. Still tons of time to go in the fourth. That's a second down and 10 for the Mountaineers. Thomas. Another low throw. And is this one caught? No, incomplete, they'll say. Keyshawn Watson was the intended target. And we've talked a lot tonight about the defensive front of Georgia Southern. Haven't given enough credit to the secondary. They played right. well also. Throws behind. You see the break. Almost intercepted as it hits the ground. But the secondary has been very active as well in coverage. Yeah, it was Monquavian Brinson, number four. He's been phenomenal throughout his career. Third down, big play here. Thomas's pass, and that's broken up. And it was Jesse Liptrot that time that got in there on Corey Sutton. And you love how Liptrot times it up perfectly. The big rake knocks it down. And you said it, Rini, about the secondary. That's the sixth pass breakup of the night. Look at this. Previous eight drives with the one touchdown and the one missed field goal. Six punts. Only the third drive of this second half. Two punts and a missed field goal. Eagles ball at the 20 when we come back. 24 to 7, Georgia Southern. To our AT&T best performer of the night. What do we got? That's uh, the Georgia Southern running attack. Wesley Kennedy. Big touchdown run. Shy works from the quarterback position. A big run as well. And just that running attack from Georgia Southern. Over 300 yards as a team. Excellent job tonight. That's tonight's AT&T best performer. A ground game for this Georgia Southern offense. But outstanding. They have it back on offense from the 20-yard line. And the pitch goes out to King. And he's taken down after a gain of about two. How about... The combination of Kennedy, Woods, and King. Check it. That was Malik Murray that time on that sweep. But how about these three? Kennedy, Woods, and King. Wow. Yeah, and look at Kennedy's average per run, right? Over 15, even Woods over 8. And, and King's been kind of that big body, short yardage type guys. But great numbers from all three. And uh, give a lot of credit to that offensive line for Georgia Southern. Really kind of getting good push up there, letting those backs run wild. Wirtz hasn't thrown a pass since four and a half minutes left in the second quarter. It's been 20 straight runs by this Georgia Southern offense. Look at 21, Kennedy. Flat comes in. Eagles backing up. Holding offense number 71. That penalty is declined. Third down. Only the fifth combined penalty of the night. Now, if you're abstained, you can stop them here, get the ball back, good field position. I mean, there's still a lot of time left here. There sure is, but they haven't really shown us anything, right? So 11.46 left. As you said, a lot of time, but they got to get going. They got to get off the field right here, and they got to get their offense the ball back. They declined it, so it's going to be third down. Third down and seven. Works. Gets away from the first man, and not the second. George Blackstock, after Akeem Davis Gaither kind of held him up a little bit. Yeah, they sent some pressure that time. That works. It looked like it was going to be a called quarterback draw. They get to him. They corral him. They make the tackle. Now... Offense has got to get going. I know they got them, so they're going to get it back here. But were you surprised that they declined that? 
no, penalty? No, because you wanted to get it to you wanted to get it to fourth down, right? So you said we'll we'll, we'll take third and long over give them second and longer. Mm -hmm. Right now it's time. They want the ball back. Catch and it's muffed, but picked back up. And it's going to come back to the spot there. And that was Thomas Hagen that time. Going to have it at their own 33 yard line. Saturday night, it is our primetime matchup with two ranked teams of the American Athletic Conference. It's going to be a fun one. SMU, 8 and 0. Memphis, 7 and 1. Game day is going to be there in Memphis to start the day on ESPN. This one's on ABC at primetime, 7.30 Saturday night. Wow. I'm excited for this game. Yeah, and you said we called that game a couple of years ago in Memphis. Can't wait to watch it on Saturday night. That's the perk of doing a Thursday night game. We get to watch all the games on Saturday. First and half state. Thomas's pass. And that, you would think, might draw a flag. And we don't see anyone there as the receiver is clearly hit before the ball got there. And that was Jalen Virgil. No flags are down. Yeah, I think Jesse Liptrot was the defender. Thought he might have got there a little early from watching it from the booth. And, and we have the benefit of slow motion. The referees out there don't. Actually, real speed and slow motion on that one. I thought it was a defense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, four straight incompletions here thrown by Zach Thomas. And not anymore. Nice catch there by Thomas Hennigan. And that is a first down into Georgia Southern Territory. It's a gain of 20 yards. Well, and now you need that sense of urgency now on apps that you got to get going. They were good that last possession of the first half. Now they got to do it here with coming up with 10 minutes left in this ball game. Swinging out to Watson. It's dropped. Incomplete. But what did I talk about earlier, right? You had the big play down the middle of the field, and they just can't follow it up. And now we have a couple flags, a little chippiness after the play. That is the fourth drop of the night by App State receivers. They've certainly got to be frustrated. So he called on Sportsman like on Lane Ecton, number seven. The wind is obviously playing with his microphone. And, and so that's a free 15 for App State. I mean, after a play, you just got to stop. And you see the receiver kind of going at it. And, it's always the last shove, right? I mean, right? The first guy's going, and then you get that last shove, and looks like it could have been offsetting there. That is a big call right yeah, there. Huge play. I agree with you. That I mean, they're both still going at it, and that's going to give App State now a first down to the 32-yard line after that. Thomas. And I think his passes tonight have just been a little bit off target, behind receivers. You can't believe the receiver. Correct. Well, it was good zone coverage. Zach Thomas is trying to put that into a small window. He goes a little back shoulder down the seam, but you know that's a tough catch for the receiver to turn and make that grab. It's threw too far behind him. It was for Watson, and in all fairness, I should say, I mean, it is a very windy day here tonight, or windy night, but it's kind of at times, right? It, it gusts. It's died down a little bit now. Still, they haven't had the connections that they're used to getting. Second down and 10. Thomas gets away from pressure. Here he goes. And to the sideline, pushed out of bounds at the 22-yard line. That is right at the first down marker. Just under 10 minutes left in this contest. Gonna be just shy. No, they're gonna give it to him. First down, App State. Three possession ball game. Keep that in mind if the Mountaineers here with 940 and ticking left in the contest. We'll give to Evans. Quite sure how many times they can afford more. Well, of this. Uh, if you're Georgia Southern, you love it, right? You want to hand it off inside? We're going to make tackles. You know, if Georgia Southern gives up a score here, make them earn it. You don't want to give them a, a big, quick one here, right? Make them earn it. We're already under 10 minutes, approaching nine minutes left in this ball game, and you just talked about it. They're down three scores in this game. And how big was the missed field goal that they had on their previous offensive possession? Talking about Huge. State, yeah. 
because then a score here, if it's a touchdown, of course, can make it a one possession game. Thomas again getting away for pressure. Now he's got a man, and it is Malik Williams. And it's a first down. It's going to set up a first down and goal inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, nice job by Zach Thomas, keeping his head up there. Showed like he was going to run, made the defender come, drops it off to his receiver. Amp State 7-0. They've won 13 in a row, third longest winning streak in the nation. One of nine remaining undefeated teams this year. Eagles trying to pull off the upset. Touchdown here can certainly help bring the Mountaineers back. Thomas, end zone, it is caught! And that's a touchdown for Corey Sutton. At that time, Zach Thomas found his big receiver, Corey Sutton, in the back of the end zone. Puts a little zip on it. That would have been good on Sundays if Sutton had both feet in the back of that end zone. Four catches, 53 yards, and that touchdown for Sutton. Go along with his teammate Malik Williams, who has the touchdown grab. And this extra point can make it a 10-point game with still eight minutes and 22 seconds left as Chandler Staten is on. And it's good. All right, so here we go. Still a 10-point game. It's still 8.22 to go in the contest. It's going to be a fun week coming up in sports. After seeing all that right there, how about it? Basketball is underway as well. Here it's a 10-point ball game in our Halloween night game in Boone, North Carolina. 24-14. to 14. Mike Corey, Rudy Ingolia with you, and we can see how Wendy has been here tonight in Boone, North Carolina. You can just kind of see from some of the fans of the stands and all the things that have been happening here. And look at this. You can't even cheerleaders trying to out. flags. Georgia Southern, they're first. It'll be 30 seconds. Yes. Yeah. No Wendy. Tough to hang on to that. And now Eli Drinkwitz, and I know you're not a huge fan of the onside kick, Mike, because we talk every week, but they lined up to kick an onside right there. Georgia Southern called a timeout to talk about it, so we'll see what they do when they come out of this timeout. The wind has got up to 39 miles per hour. We've had a little bit of snow here tonight as well, not accumulating to anything, but it's been swirling around the air. Temperatures dropped almost 30 degrees from earlier today. The fans are certainly bundled up here on this Halloween night. It's you know, kind of deterred a little bit of the crowd that we thought was going to be on hand here at Kid Brewer Stadium, but it's such a tough place to play here at App State. They do it so well. We'll see if it's going to be enough for them here tonight with the fans that are still here supporting this group to try to help them win their 14th in a row. In jeopardy right now. All right, so the onside kick. Being attempted here by Chandler State, and we'll see. Sometimes they do kick it deep out of this position, or the ball is blowing off the tee. So that's look at how far it's blowing down the field. Wind almost took it to the uh, 10 yards. I guess they feel if it's a two-possession ball game, even if you hold them here, they they get it. Give up a field goal at the worst. It's going to be recovered by Georgia Southern. Nice job by Boudry. Jay Boudry there on special Love to see teams. a linebacker up front on the yeah. hands team, right? Shows you what kind of athlete Jay Boudry is. So he fields that onside kick easily. I just think it's a lot of time left in the game, yeah. and you got all three of your timeouts remaining. I, I just don't know why you give up a field position. Shy Wirtz, number one, junior out of Clinton, South Carolina. It's been a solid night for him, and now look at it. Seventh player in Georgia Southern history with 2,000 rushing yards and 2,000-plus passing yards. Congratulations to him. Yeah, phenomenal career thus far, thus far for the junior. Probably not going to add to those passing yards tonight. Just a hunch. LaRoche. 
taken down. The Marco Jackson. And now, obviously, for Georgia Southern, you're really going to take your time. If you're shy words, let that play clock run down under five every time. You know, that's one of my pet peeves when you're trying to close the game out. Let it run. They break the huddle with 20. We'll see here. Second down. Works, keeper. And it's inside the 40 yard line. Going to set up a third down at about five. Very manageable here for Georgia Southern. You also have to think, Reedy, you're probably not going to try a field goal, you know, even if they were even closer because of the wind, the swirling wind. So your no. defense has got to come up with four yeah, stops here. This is two down territory here left for Georgia Southern. And I like option here. They've had success with option. It gives Shy Wirtz the ability to read it. Hand it, keep it, or pitch it. Kennedy and King in the backfield. Third down for the Eagles. And the give goes to Kennedy, and he will be taken down shy of the first by Jackson yet again. And now here you go with a fourth down and two. Yeah, I, I don't even think there's a question of it for Chad Lunsford and Georgia Southern. They're going for it here. It'll be fourth and three, actually. Clock is ticking. You could run this down close to six minutes remaining before they take the snap and try to convert a fourth down. It would be killer for App State if they do. Play the game here for the Mountaineers to get a stop. Words, keeper, and he's not gonna get it. What a play defensively by App State. And I believe Josh, Josh Thomas, Thomas, yeah, came out of the secondary. And you watch Shy Words at the end. He's gonna try to reach for the 34 yard line to get this first down, but Thomas comes up and makes the tackle from the secondary, holds him short, and a great defensive stand for App State. That's the eighth tackle of the night for Thomas, and the biggest one obviously there as they have it back at the 35 yard line. Has he, does he not make that play? Yeah, I think this one, this one could be over. Well, if he doesn't make it, App State starts using their timeouts there on defense. Now you still have all three timeouts, and you got six minutes and five seconds left in this game, down two scores. Thomas dumps it off. It's dropped by Evans. I mean, not a bad, you know, drop there. Although that's the fifth of the night, because the clock would have kept running. Only got a couple of yards. Six minutes even to go. How about the lack of points tonight from App State? And again, credit the Georgia well, Southern defense. It, it, you look at their numbers offensively, they're, they're tops in the nation in multiple categories offensively. Thomas, dangerous pass, and it's batted up in the air by Jesse Liptrot. Intended for Hennigan. And Zach Thomas got hit just as he threw it. He saw the pressure coming again up the middle. Threw it probably a count before he wanted to. And it goes incomplete. You know, and it can be disconcerting when you're a quarterback. When you know you're about to get hit and that rush is coming at you. Dylan Springer, 98, right up the middle. And they've had good pressure between the guard center gaps tonight. Seven breakups by Georgia Southern defenders, five drops by App State receivers. Third down, over the middle. That is an amazing catch. It's Malik Williams, he has it for the first. Right before midfield, coming up big time there. Well, Georgia Southern sent a blitz that time to defensive coordinator Scott Sloan. Thomas steps up, gets it to Williams, makes the catch, holds on after taking the big hit. Thomas. Again, over the middle, Williams, oh, and it's almost intercepted. Nearly picked off by Kendrick Duncan, Jr. Let his hands all over it. Yeah, and I tell you, it's something with this right hash for Zach Thomas. We've seen a bunch of throws down this right hash, kind of go behind. 
the receivers. He just sails behind, and I tell you what, if Duncan's looking for that ball, he's really playing the man. If he just watches the ball, he probably intercepts that ball easily. Just want to make note of what's going on in the backfield. Darrington Evans is banged up. He's on the sideline. He's out of the game right now. Marcus Williams Jr. is in there for the blocking. And now Thomas's pass. A wide open man, and that's off the hands of Keyshawn Watson. A second down and 10 play. Yeah, and just too many drops tonight, right? You have receivers open. That's one Watson. If he catches that, he's got some green as well to get some yards after the catch. And it's got to be tough when you're the quarterback there, you know? I mean, can't get into it with your teammates, right? I mean, you're all in the same squad here. You're trying to do it, but it's got to be frustrating for Thomas back there. Six drops tonight. With time again, he's going to take off. Zach Thomas, first and more, and he slides inside the 30-yard line. And this is that sense of urgency we talked about early. You got to get on the ball and get going. And they are. 19-yard run. Handoff goes to Marcus Williams. Breaks the tackle inside the 20. Williams and out of bounds inside the 10. And that's definitely the first time tonight that we've seen two back-to-back -back running plays that were big chunk plays there. Correct. And you talk about getting players in, in, in space, and you can say it's a missed tackle, but I give credit to the running back, Williams. Thomas up top of the end zone, and the pass is caught. Back corner by Corey Sutton. Oh, what a catch. There's a flag down. Corey Sutton. Pass interference, defense number four. That penalty is declined, resulting in players a touchdown. And I mean, not only a tremendous catch by Corey Sutton in the back of the end zone, tremendous throw by Zach Thomas. I mean, they go quick, he launches it, and you see Sutton's getting grabbed. Good call for pass interference, but boy, Sutton's able to control this, be in bounds. He controls it through the catch, and it's a touchdown. Extra point from Staten is good. That is back-to-back -back touchdown receptions by Corey Sutton. And all of a sudden, it's a three-point ball game with 4.47 to play you here know, tonight. A lot of people question Eli Drinkwitz why he was going to try that 29-yard field goal. That's why it gets missed, but would be a tie ball game right now. All right, here we go again. Do you try another onside <laughs> kick, right? You got three timeouts remaining. You got 4.47 left. And App State fired up. What about a, that catch by Sutton? How did he haul this in? Well, and he's going to control to the ground. And then money rolls over. You're going to see the ball move. But he's already completed the catch. Brings it in nicely there. Survives the ground. Now watch. And he comes back over. There the ball gets moved out. And that is completely fine. He had already completed the catch. Yep. Thomas is fired up. And with all that's happened here tonight, being down all game, having to fight their way back, drop balls, the wind, the weather, everything. They haven't stopped fighting. Game. That's one thing, you know, Eli Drinkwood said, their motto, pride, passion, and purpose. That's what they talk about, and they've played hard tonight. And now it's Georgia Southern. They've got to start to move this football. Their last three possessions are three and out, then they missed a field goal, then they turn it over on downs. Staten. Got a mid-range kick here that's going to bounce, and it's going to go out of bounds. Not what they needed there. Now, think about this. App State's won 13 in a row, right? Third longest streak in the nation, one of nine remaining undefeated teams. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. We know the last team to beat them. It's this Georgia Southern team right here from October of last year, and they got them good, a 34-14 final in that contest. Yeah, and it's a game where quarterback Zach Thomas got injured early in the first quarter, actually played three plays. He was out, and Georgia Southern just had their way as they beat half State by 20. 
And the fans stormed the field at the end of that game. The first win over a ranked opponent ever at the FBS level for Georgia Southern and against one of their rivals. And they're trying to do it again here tonight. Trying to spoil what could be a special season for App State. And important to know, App State has all three timeouts left, which is huge. From the 35-yard line. Works. Option. King. Only a yard. And, and the other thing, Randy, that I like about kicking the ball a little bit deeper and not trying the onside kick is because if you stop them here on fourth down, they're more likely to punt the ball. On Correct. their own side of the field, they're going to go for it, and they might end up getting the first. So why would you want to give them four chances instead well, of three? And that's why he did an onside kick. And I think the other onside kick was just, you know, they hadn't scored the touchdown. They were still down yeah. by a couple scores. It's all moot point now, Mike. Second down and nine. Works and they give again to King, and App State's ready for it. They're just now Akeem Davis Gaither first on the scene. And this game's all about momentum, right? I mean, App State really hadn't had any momentum in this ballgame. They have it now, both, both offensively and defensively. They are excited. They used their first time out. And that saves 40 seconds on the play clock right there. Third down and nine coming up. As the fans are juiced now here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Sports Center comes your way tonight after West Virginia and number 12 Baylor. That's another game involving an undefeated team and the Bears, and that's a close one. Michael Eves and Zubin Mahenti have Sports Center for you. Plus the 49ers and Cardinals reactions from that game. And Trevor Maddich comes by to detail while Georgia's offense is struggling. All that and more coming up Sports Center tonight after college football. And App State trying to continue that 13 game winning streak. Third longest of the country right now. And how about this 28 straight runs for Georgia Southern. Do they attempt to pass here? I don't think so partner. I think they're gonna go triple option. App State's had two three and outs tonight on defense. Can they get another one, the biggest one of the night, if they get it? Wurtz. Oh, he's going to throw it, and it's batted down. What a play from Akeem Davis Gaither. And it is not ruled. Yeah, they're going to pick it up and go into the end zone. And now the referee's saying incomplete. I mean, that was a pass that was knocked down, so that is an incompletion. <laughs> Jordan Heilig was able to pick well, it up and go into the end zone. But. Phenomenal play from Akeem Davis Gaither, which Ted Roof told me, best defensive player on the field. Athletic has NFL caliber, uh, not even close. I mean, it was a, clearly a forward pass that Gaither knocks down. But the big thing is, Mike, they go ahead and pass on third down. It's incomplete. The clock is stopped. There's still almost four minutes left in this ball game, and they're going to get the ball back here with two timeouts. Wow. Unreal. What a, what a change, right? Fourth and nine punt. Ball is going to be picked up by Hennigan and dropped on the spot. Key play was a fourth down stop by App State's Josh Thomas and it ends up leading to a touchdown. How about this play he made defensively? Oh, phenomenal play. Thomas, one of the leaders of that defense, comes up from his strong safety position. Stop shy works, and really after that play, the momentum changed, and how about the quarterback, Zach Thomas, dropping it in the bucket to Corey Sutton in the back of the end zone. Defense gets another stop, and do they have another drive in them, possibly to go down and win this game? Keep their streak alive. Make it 14 straight. Darrington Evans is back in the ball game in the backfield for App State. This fourth quarter, they've got 14 points. They had seven the first three quarters of action here tonight. Chains were a little off. They had to get them fixed, and we're ready to go. 
Four receivers set. And off to the Evans. And Evans breaks free and gets up to the 44 yard line of the first down. Kendrick Duncan Jr. in the tackle. Gain of 16. And, and you see what momentum does? I mean, Evans looks like he's got a little better pep in his step there. The offensive line does. Everyone is feeling this thing right now. It's a different App State team than we saw the first three quarters. Evans again. And gets hit, gains a couple there. So, you know, you have to keep in mind, again, with the wind and the weather, you know, they're thinking touchdown yeah. here. They're like, after all this, they could go in and take the lead. But I tell you, if I'm Eli Drinkwitz, I keep that same sense of urgency you had the last couple scores, the same pace. Because you had that Georgia Southern defense on, the, on their heels those last couple touchdowns. We saw really nothing tonight from App State until this fourth quarter. And here they are with three minutes to go, down by just three. Thomas fakes on the pass. Defender was jumping in the air. He's going to slide just into Georgia Southern territory. He's going to bring up a third down and four. Yeah, good coverage uh, again in the secondary. Thomas nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Picks it up and obviously two down, two down territory here, Mike. They got two to pick this up. So I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe a little inside handoff to Evans. See if he can pop one because Georgia Southern maybe thinking pass here. Six for 14 on third down tonight, but four of seven this half for App State. Thomas guns it. It is behind the receiver and incomplete off the turf. Corey Sutton, the intended target. And now it's going to come down to this. Yeah, throws behind him, goes incomplete. That's why, you know, me, it's easy for me to sit up here and say, but I would have loved knowing that you had two downs to get it. Maybe run it with your big back, Evans. See if he can get it, but. Fourth down here, you got to throw it here. Still the two timeouts remaining. If they do not pick this up, the game is not over. Three point lead for Georgia Southern. Fourth and four from midfield App State. Thomas, the pass low and incomplete. Off the turf, Georgia Southern will take over at midfield with 2.16 remaining. And App State still with those two timeouts. Yeah, the defense needs to come out and do what they did last possession, but a couple chances to pick it up for App State. Throws low. Good close by the defense once again. The ball clearly low, came out of Zach Thomas's hands. And really, Malik Williams didn't even have a chance to catch yeah, that one. He really didn't. I'm sure they'd want that one back, just not a high percentage. Defender right over him. But with two timeouts, there's a chance still to get the ball back. See what this App State defense does. Wurtz. Hands it off here. Kennedy, and he's going to be taken down. A gain of about two, maybe three. And very simple here. If you're Georgia Southern, you're thinking first down. First down, the game's over. Right. Timeout. Appalachian State, their second. It'll be 30 seconds. Saturday night primetime game. SMU and Memphis. Game day will start the day there in Memphis, Tennessee. And then Shane Bouchelle of the Mustangs, Kenny Gainwell and the Tigers. It's going to be fun. Pulled some tarps up from the Liberty Bowl. Uh, going to be a few more people in that game oh, than, yeah. than normal. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll have that for you on ABC Saturday night. Here, though, tonight, you've got one of the nine remaining undefeated teams of college football, App State, 7-0. They've won 13 straight with their last loss to Georgia Southern last year. It's coming down here to the late stages. 2-11 left. Second down. Eagles. App State looking for a stop and using their final timeout if they can get it here. Kennedy, yes, hit immediately by DeMarco Jackson. And the timeout taken again right away by Eli Drinkwitz. So let's think about this now. No more timeouts. If you're Georgia Southern, you run it, you get tackled. Let's say the play takes about five, six seconds. That's two minutes. You can run 40 off the clock. They're going to get the ball back with meh, about a minute and 30, minute 25. How about the remaining undefeated teams in action? Baylor is playing right now as well here tonight, and they're up by only three points at home against West Virginia. So you got five teams that are off, off. this week. Yeah. yeah, I don't think Clemson's going to have a problem this week. And then, you know, we talked about the SMU-Memphis game. That's a huge one. We got this one going on here in, in Baylor, so. 
This is when the mayhem starts. Yeah. Halloween night, and now boom, right into November. You got it. Lots Here, gonna happen. Here we go, third down and seven. Can App State get this ball back? Wurtz, keeper, they got it, and no game. Good combination tackles there by Jordan Fair to Marco Jackson and Akeem Davis gave So my math was off. They're, they're not going to have to punt this. They're about a minute and 20 left. I'm assuming what Chad Lunsford will do is he'll run this down to one second the play clock. He'll call a timeout. And then he'll get his uh, punt team out there and kick this thing away. App State will probably get the ball back with about a minute and 10-ish, I'm going to guess. Minute 12, something like that. This is more like the App State defense that we knew coming in. 47% forcing three and outs to the opponents this season, which is third best in FCS. This is going to be the fourth three and out, third this quarter by Georgia Southern. And now, you know, if you're Eli Drinkwitz and you're App State, do you try to go after this punt, right? Yeah. I mean, you had a couple things here. You can try to go after it. You can try to set up a return. Um, but you're still in this ball game. I mean, worst case scenario, they punt it. Eh, ten seconds goes off. Say the ball rolls around. You're gonna have about a minute and ten seconds to try to go down and win this ball game, or kick a field goal to tie it. Well, that's it. Albeit with the weather and the wind here tonight, and obviously a field goal still does tie this ball game. So they you know, need to go the length of the field. But listen, it's gonna be interesting. The way this ball game has gone, the way App State has played, the fact that it's 24-21 and they're still gonna have a chance in this game. You, you got to be ecstatic if you're an App State fan. No doubt. It's a 20 point win last year for the Eagles. Their first win ever versus a ranked opponent. They're trying to do it again here tonight. Fourth and seven. Punt from Anthony Beck. And it's going to come to a stop just across the 15-yard line, and that's where App State will take over with a minute and 10 seconds to go and out of timeouts. Yeah, and the key for them is get something here on first down. Right. Don't, you know, middle of the field, doesn't matter. Get something positive, get something chunky, and then get going and, and try to follow it up. I and mean, we've They've shown it. They've done it earlier tonight on a couple of their touchdown drives. Was it the night that App State expected? They averaged 41 points a game. They got only 21 here tonight. They find themselves trailing by three. With now a minute and 10 seconds to go at their own 15-yard line. But can they pull it out somehow, some way? The pass is incomplete. Sutton again, the intended target. But I don't, you know, I don't know if the, it's the cold weather, the wet weather, but boy, Zach Thomas has been off a bunch tonight. A lot of. A lot of ground balls, a lot of balls coming out going low. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering how much the wind is really yeah. affecting it tonight or what the deal is, but you're right, I agree. Second and ten. Outside, nice catch, and out of bounds is Jalen Virgil. They need more of that. Well, and that's, that's a, a nice throw and catch right there on the sideline, as you said. Pick up a first down, new set of, of downs, and Still a minute one left, clock stops with the out of bounds. Need about another 40 yards or so to kind of make this manageable for Chandler Staten if they go for the field goal. Thomas, over the middle, another dangerous throw for Sutton and was he interfered with? There are no flags on the field. I tell you, well, Brinson had that right hand on the low hip of the receiver and a lot of times when the back judge sees that, He'll throw the flag because he kind of turned the receiver. That's what I saw from the booth. Yeah, you see that right hand? It's close. You, you get that call a bunch. We've been involved in a lot of games yeah, this year. With you see that a bunch. Flags, yeah. you know, this is a game of the complete opposite. There has not been a lot of flags thrown here tonight. Yeah, and Eli Drinkowitz is mad. He wanted that one. They are letting them play. Thomas with pressure. Alerts it. He's got a blocker. He can head to the sideline, and he does. Out of bounds of the 33. It's going to be shy of the first by about five yards. And remember, it, it's been a swirling wind, but the direction App State's going, the way the wind is, it's to the back. And there is a flag on the play, Mike, way back in the second, yeah, in the uh, backfield. Late flag. Holding offense oh. number 70. 10 yard penalty, replay second down. Well, late flag down there is Cooper Hodges. 
The right tackle called for it for App State. So you don't get the call right with the hand on the hip where you're, you, you think you deserve it. From the back judge, you don't get it. And then next play, boy, you get a holding call from Hodges. and That's killer. Mm. Ball is backed up to the 18-yard line. Remember, no timeouts left for App State. 13 wins in a row on the line here tonight. Second and 20. Thomas again, and the catch Virgil. On the same side over there. It's going to bring up a third down and long. Clock continues to run here, however. Yeah. Wasn't close to out of bounds. Clock still running. They got to move. Thomas. Dumps it off. Evans. Makes a move. Oh, what a play to the sideline. And that will stop the clock and gets them close to the first. It's going to be fourth and two. He doesn't get the first up, but what a great play by Evans because he makes the catch. He makes the first guy move. He's able to get upfield and get out of bounds. And now a couple players from Georgia Southern are down. And the... Uh, I heard a few boos kind of coming from the fans. I don't know why they'd be upset because that actually gives App State some time to talk about figure it. out what they want to do here. Yeah, I wouldn't want to run up and have to fire up a fourth down and two. And if you don't get it, it's over. Now they can think about it here. There was some tasseling going on too as yeah. well. Pulling some of the players apart. It's, it's definitely... We kind of see it every week, down, yeah. but I'm with you. I mean, Zach Thomas had a chance to come over and talk to Eli Drinkwitz sure. on the sideline, so I, you know, I almost think it benefits App State. Fourth down and two, 21 seconds to go. App State trying to keep this alive and a chance for the win. The catch is made. It is a first down out of bounds by Corey Sutton with the clock at now 17 seconds remaining. First down and, and, and they're in striking distance to pick up that chunk of yardage needed to at least get a field goal attempt. And they need about 25 or 30 yards to give themselves a chance. Thomas over the middle. The catch is made inside the 40 by Malik Williams. The clock is going to stop to move the chain for 20 it. seconds. Yeah, and they'll spike it. Oh, did they say it's wow, a couple of seconds? The ball hit the turf. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. Well, and now replay's got to get involved because the clock's going to be completely wrong because it was running. Again, the ball's behind Williams. It's under further review. Oh, he did not have that And it's ball. the right call, but I question yep. why did it take so long, right? I mean, boy, the whole offense ran up back. The defense was ready to go. The clock's running, and then they come in late. It's the right call, but now they got to get it. Yeah, that is a great call by the officials. Uh, he did not have that ball, and it hit the turf. So it's incomplete. Clearly see that ball come out. Correct. And he didn't see, and he turned. He didn't make what was called a football move. As he turns and goes to the ground, the ball comes out. This has been one wild Halloween game here tonight, right? In Boone, North Carolina. It's actually snowing a little bit in the air now. Kid Brewer Stadium. This is a you know, if he was able to hold on there, Mike, probably would have been about a 56-yard field goal attempt, but still had some time to get some more yardage, but that's clearly going to be an incomplete pass. Now they just got to make sure they get the clock right mm -hmm. and put it back where it was, the original line of scrimmage. And the ruling was an incomplete pass. Correct. That official came in and said, no, it hit the turf. And you heard our referee, Wayne Winkler, say the ruling is an incomplete pass in the field. Then they're going to go take a look at it, and we saw it. It hit the turf. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's an incomplete pass. Second down. And the clock is right. Well, they're going to put 13 seconds on the clock, so yeah, a second attempt. Yeah, I, I, a couple seconds. It would have stopped on the first down anyway, but got a couple ticks back. Thomas steps up, low throw again. Incomplete for Thomas Hennigan. And 
now what do you got here with nine well, seconds to get yeah, one? Yeah, no, I think I think you call your your lateral play, your your hook and ladder, get your multiple guys going. I don't know if you, you know, I don't think you have enough time to hit one down the field for 30 yards, clock stop, and then get down there and spike it. So this is going to be your trick play here, in my opinion. Third down and ten. Thomas and midfield, you call it Rainey and Williams. And that's the efforts of Hyman here, Hodges. And the ball is on the turf. That's it. It's over. And Georgia Southern is going to do it again, pulling off the upset over App State for the second year in a row. Georgia Southern wins it. They are going to review this final play here. But what a job by the Eagles. Hey. Yeah, I, I, listen, we love rivalry games, right? App State looked like they were kind of out of it. The entire game just didn't play what we're used to seeing on App State. But boy, they came back hard. They never stopped fighting. And gave us a great finish. Chad Lunsford trying to tell his team they kind of get off the field and get back to the sideline. They're reviewing the final play. But the Georgia Southern Eagles that led the entire way. Here's a look at the final play again. Yeah, they tried the lateral play, and really the review is a little anticlimactic because the game's over. Mm -hmm. And they had blown the whistle anyway, so. Even if you say the lineman's knee wasn't down, the fumble was recovered by Georgia Southern. Ball game's over. Right, they give him the ball and come back to that spot, and that'd be it. Two touchdown underdog coming in. The Eagles. It'd be four wins After further run. review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner's knee was down. The clock is at zero. The game is over. So Georgia Southern improves to five and three with his three-point win over App State. Their 13-game winning streak is over, and also their undefeated season as well. And more importantly for Georgia Southern, they own the tiebreaker now with App State in the Sun Belt. So we talked about mayhem. Mayhem has started in this 2019 season tonight. App State's gonna be four and one on the Sun Belt, Georgia Southern and Georgia State, both three and one. So you're right, it has started and as we get into November, boy, some crazy things are happening but already. You come on the road, you protect the football, and you rush for over 300 yards, you're gonna win, my friend. They held on. App State had some chances there at the end. He didn't see much coming from their offense all night. A team that averages 41 points a game. They only had 21, but that fourth quarter, you almost got the sense that they might have completed the comeback, but yeah. it just fell a little shot. Listen, they got some momentum back. You know, they were playing with some excitement, some passion at the end of that game that you really didn't see in the beginning of the game that you wish you did, but it's a learning experience. First loss, first career loss for head coach Eli Drinkwitz. And they'll learn from it. It's still a very good team, and they're still in this thing for the Sun Belt. You know, the group of five issue is probably a different issue, but their main goal is to keep winning and, and try to win a Sun Belt championship. I wonder if we'll have two Halloween upsets here tonight over our undefeated teams, West Virginia and Baylor. They're battling a three point game late in that game as well. Fun one with you here it's tonight. It was fun. Friend. And that's all for us. Thanks for watching. Georgia Southern knocks off App State. Stop with their 13-game winning streak, giving them their first loss of the season. Second year in a row, they've done it. And knocking off another ranked opponent, the Mountaineers. For our entire crew, up in the booth, Tim McDermott, Mike Nataro, my brother Brian Corey, Rini and Golia. I'm Mike Corey. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great night. Georgia Southern wins it by three. So long from Boone.